Thou art the ruler of the minds of all people, dispenser of our destiny. Thy name rouses the hearts of the Punjab, Sindh, Gujarat and Maratha, of the Dravid, Utkal and Banga. It echoes in the hills of the Vindhyas and Himachal, mingles in the music of the Yamuna and Ganga, and is chanted by the waves of the Indian Sea. They pray for thy blessings and sing thy praise. The saving of all people waits in thy hand, thou dispenser of our destiny. Victory, victory, victory to thee. Found among the writings of Rabindranath Tagore in Kolkata, South Bengal. Hey everybody, it's Party Leet. Welcome back to our Sikh Empire run in Victoria 3. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be an absolutely massive episode, as if everything goes according to plan, this is the session where we strike at Great Britain proper. This is going to be absolutely huge. Last session, we already saw proof that we're able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Great Britain on the battlefield, we're able to demolish their armies, and we also prove that uh, we actually strike fear into British hearts. They were willing to back down from a diplomatic play that allowed us to liberate Canada absolutely massive but i assure you the diplomatic play i have planned for when we're able to make our next one against great britain is not going to be one that they'll be willing to back down from we're going to take so much from them they're going to want to fight and they're certainly going to try but i assure you victory will be ours i am really very excited for this session folks but just as a reminder of course we do have currently a truce with the british and i believe that truce lasts until 1902 as you can see here a very fitting month as well though a few days off as far as the specific date is concerned we'll try and get our diplomatic play going as close to that date as possible because I don't want to waste any more time. Yes, we will still be a pariah at the time, almost certainly, but truth be told, we can only wait so much longer before we have to start striking at the British because otherwise we're going to fall too far behind and they're going to continue to improve their technological capabilities and uh, we'll have an impossible time trying to actually take from them what we need to uh, bring down their strength and ultimately, eventually, subjugate them right on that note on the topic of strength let's go ahead and take a look at the tech tree over here and let's go ahead and pursue the uh, war gaming technology which will allow us to have siege artillery again this tech will be completed in about 35 months time maybe fewer months if we actually improve our literacy and innovation along the way but uh, that pretty much lines up with the declaration of our diplomatic play and following war so I think it just makes more sense to pursue this rather than NCO training which would take 10 years so we wouldn't even have it in time for that next war and again I fear if we delay too much then all of a sudden we'll still find ourselves on the back foot despite having you know spent all this time on this technology so war gaming it is siege artillery it shall be and folks we're gonna make it work we're going to hurt the british so hard and i cannot wait to finally reveal my plans but again there's a few years before that time comes of course 1902 is uh not right around the corner, which gives us some time for further development of the Indian subcontinent. Now, there's a couple of things I actually want to pursue because we do still have a fair bit of money in the investment pool, and it is still making a fair bit of money as well. Again, the uh, sources are throwing in less than a quarter million per week now, but still a significant sum. And I just want to point out uh, the reduction in this number here, I think is largely because of the landowners getting rid of their uh, third level trait over here, which was increasing the aristocratic investment pool contribution so we just got to keep an eye on these things because uh, again making these guys loyal is going to be almost impossible so uh, we're, we're likely not going to get that back but the industrialists have a similar one with job creators so we want to make sure that they don't lose their loyalty because then we're going to miss out on this plus 20% capitalist investment pool contribution we also want to make sure that these guys stay powerful so that this stays at plus 20% and doesn't go down to plus 10% so there's some stuff that we'll have to manage over here as we continue to develop the subcontinent just to make sure that the investment pool stays strong and continues to uh, yeah, develop the nation alongside government funding. Now, if we take a look at the market screen, you will see that there are quite a few spots that are lacking market access. That's what the shades of uh, your market's color are. Now, down in Madras, we are already building a bunch of railways, so hopefully that will solve the situation down over here. But as you saw, there are a few other spots where we could uh, improve market access. And again, lacking market access really causes a lot of trouble. I mean, 64% is ridiculous 
ridiculous. And because of that, we're actually hurting the overall availability and uh, cost of things like, you know, lead or iron in other states where these things are needed to produce further goods. So let's go ahead and get the uh, railway started in Balochistan. This is the first time they'll be seeing it. Let's get it up to level five. That will hopefully be enough. And apart from that over here in Delhi as well, let's go ahead and build up the uh, railway a bit further. This doesn't have to be as prioritized. So what we have over here is up top Balochistan because Balochistan is in a terrible state. At the uh, middle over here, we'll have Madras. And then all the way at the bottom, we have the investment in Delhi. Now, there is still a little bit of room, of course, as far as our construction sector is concerned and we're going to be investing that don't you worry apart from the railway i also want to invest in something brand new if we once more go to the market screen and scroll all the way to the bottom i think i might have pointed this out close to the end of the previous session but there is actually a taste for fine art developing in the indian subcontinent and if we take a look at uh, consumption you'll see that uh, punjab north south bengal and it looks as though madras here have some consumption starting it's not a lot it's just a little bit because again on average our populations do not actually you know uh, encompass the wealth levels needed for having a taste for fine art but clearly there are some outliers again these are all average numbers right so there are people on either end of these numbers that are interested in fine art fine art is also a way of providing services it's a it's an alternative good so why don't we go ahead and chase after that but we'll do it in sort of reasonable quantities we don't want to overdo it this is something the government has to invest in it's not like the uh, investment pool is willing to spend money on the arts no surprise there, I suppose. So we will have to spend government money, but I'm not too concerned on that front because uh, we're making a lot of cash. And remember, we're not even collecting taxes all that much. So if push comes to shove, we can always push this higher and higher. And from an economic perspective, we're just fine. Separately, though, the other reason I want to pursue fine arts is not just to uh, provide it to the people, but also to provide it to the world and become a significant producer of fine art. As you can see, there is a lot of prestige on the line, and it's not that far away. We're obviously not competing with Great Britain here. They are not even on the map as far as art is concerned. But uh, hey, it doesn't hurt to get some extra prestige and share, yes, this uh, wonderful stuff with the rest of the world. So why don't we go ahead and establish our first ever arts academy in South Bengal over here. And uh, let's get it up to, let's say, level five. I think that should be enough for starters. And as you can see, yes, that's eating away at our balance. But again, that's fine. We're, we're, we're perfectly fine as far as the economy is concerned, at least for the time being. Though keep in mind, some of that money is coming from uh, the war reparations uh, with Austria, obviously. So let's not get too cocky, because I would like to keep taxes down if we can. Apart from introducing fine art to the glorious subcontinent, we will also be going over to Punjab to introduce power plants. Folks, it is time to bring electricity to the people. Again, we're about to enter the 1900s, so why not enter the uh, next century uh, with electricity? Now, granted, we'll be just a little off the mark because it'll take 52 weeks to build this. Hang on a second, hang on a second. If I cancel you, if I actually top priority, all right, we're good, 30 weeks. That means we're within the year and uh, yeah, we'll bring power to the people just on the cusp of the 1900s. And I think that's gonna be pretty exciting because uh, it's going to provide us a lot of options as far as production methods are concerned, especially with regards to our uh, street lights over here, which can start using electricity. Of course, we had access to this technology earlier, but uh, without electricity, we're going to see input goods shortages and all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and get this in place because as you can see, the production of services is through the roof when you start using electricity like this. And uh, again, services is something that is used across the board. All strata of society use it. We are struggling to keep up with it, even though our average prices are literally at plus minus 0%. If we could bring it lower, then that frees up more money among our populace to spend on other things, including just upward mobility. Now, furthermore, on the topic of upward mobility, we're going to be making some changes to make sure people are able to get just that little bit more literate. Why don't we go ahead and make some adjustments to the ways we're spending our authority? I don't think we need to encourage industry as much as we're doing right now. I would also like to maybe stop suppressing the landowners. I'm a little nervous about that, I'm going to be honest with you, because their clout just continues to go higher and higher, though right now it does seem as though they're struggling a little bit 
uh, despite the reducing penalty from their loss in the revolutionary struggle, you can kind of see a bit of a dip over here. You can see there's seeming to be a bit of a dip over here as well. So, so maybe we're safe to stop suppressing them. I really hope I don't regret that decision. And separately as well, yes, we're going to go ahead and cancel some of these other decrees to encourage manufacturing and resource industries. So let's go ahead and make these adjustments over here. And this is all in the interest of, uh, yeah, changing sort of what our nation focuses on as it uh, approaches the future and not just approaches, but in many ways leads the world into the future, right? So let's get promoting that social mobility. I think uh, down over here in Bombay makes sense because uh, the population there is quite large. So Delhi, let's get you involved as well. And uh, I believe it was Madras that was the other big contributor. We have a little bit more actually, so Mysore as well. And that covers all of our bases, all of our most populous states with promoted social mobility. Now, with all that done, let's finally start engaging in some of these events that are going off. We do have to focus still on internal affairs until, yes, our bold move against Great Britain later this session. Oh my goodness, I am so excited because I've got some plans and I think you'll like them. I think you'll like them. So, what do we have up over here? An accidental discovery. While the government prepares to pass the secret police law, our agents have captured an East India Company spy, damaging our already feeble trust in them. A list of all of our generals and their families, notes on the state of our barracks and ports, predictions about imports, exports, production, ports, everything. I'm even surprised that they didn't get an inventory of our favorite wine. Oh, this is an interesting development. So, either our people need to know, proving to them that uh, the secret police needs to exist to protect them from such threats. It'll reduce the enactment time, I assume, as uh, people start to support it a bit more, and it'll also increase the enactment success chance for the same reason, but because we publicize this information, East India Company is going to be a bit more upset at us, not that we care. Uh, alternatively, this very useful information should remain private. This will allow us to still increase the success chance, though it focuses on that enactment success chance uh, and less so on enactment time. Both of those are improved, but uh, as you can see, it's by sort of uh, by flipped degrees, I guess. At the same time, though, our uh, relations with the East India Company will deteriorate a little bit further while the armed forces will be pleased because of this counterintelligence attack actually using uh, our counterintelligence in an offensive way uh, behind the scenes rather than just letting everybody know and, and using it for, I guess, you know, political clout. Um, saying clout in a non-game mechanic sort of way. I think it's very important for us to keep this information private because it will increase that success chance significantly and it'll keep the armed forces pleased. Again, uh, I do want to try and secure their loyalty for as long as possible. Patriotic fervor is going to make a very big difference when we fight Great Britain. So uh, we want to make sure this stays as high as possible as far as their loyalty is concerned because I'm sure we're going to be passing some laws that they're not going to be big fans of. So uh, we just want to get uh, those wins where we can as far as their loyalty is concerned. On the topic of wins, we do have a loss over here as well with inefficient agriculture. So it's the industrialists here uh, complaining about subsistence farms. Now again, the industrialists are on the cusp of losing their loyalty and we want job creators for that extra investment pool contribution. So unfortunately, it's uh, going to be support to the industrialists over here. We should follow their advice, I think. It will create a bit of radicalization among the upper strata, which are largely, I mean, landowners, I think. Uh, so we'll, we'll have to take that hit. Landowners are weaker and weaker as time goes on, so that should be okay. The alternative, of course, is to say they serve our purpose and upset the industrialists, which is not an option, I think. So we should follow their advice, keep their loyalty, keep those extra contributions to the investment pool, and uh, keep trucking on with progress in the subcontinent as we plot and plan against our would-be oppressors. Now, many of you have been asking a few questions that I would like to address as time goes forward. Uh, first of all, with regards to actually annexing Awad, the reason why I'm waiting is simply because I don't want to upset France more than they already are. See, if I try and improve relations with France, it looks as though I can, so we can actually see here that our relations are currently poor. I don't quite recall when that happened or why, but that is the current state. And if we upset them too much, then they just might decide to uh, punish us. They might just decide to try and cut us down to size, and that's where things get very scary, right? So that's why I'm holding off on any annexations that aren't actually necessary, why I'm holding off on Pondicherry as well, because again, I do not want to actually fight with France. They are extremely powerful. They are the superpower right now. So uh, I just want to make sure we don't upset them more than absolutely necessary. Uh, so the next time we're going to 
you know, gain any infamy is going to be when we fight Great Britain. Again, when we liberated Canada, that didn't gain us any infamy. It didn't upset the French. And so I was willing to do that. And I'm willing to do that even more, you know, to free Cape Colony or New South Wales or whatever else it might be. But, uh... I mean, maybe that's what I have planned, or maybe I have something else planned. I guess you'll have to uh, watch and see to find out. But uh, I just wanted to address that really quickly. I've also seen some comments with regards to uh, chasing after Nepal, Bhutan, and Sikkim. Uh, again, same situation there. We're not able to do so peacefully. We would have to uh, actually conquer them. And even though it is a marginal addition to our infamy, uh, there is a risk. I mean, I guess these guys are in the clear. There's a risk that, uh, that extra infamy is going to... Uh, so to have a domino effect and upset France, even if they're not listed here, uh, again, in infamy does have a direct impact on uh, how nations feel about you and how they treat you as you make uh, certain moves. So we're just going to avoid that trouble because there are bigger fish to fry and bigger goals on our mind, right? Meanwhile, it seems as though the industrialists were hell-bent on uh, becoming upset either way. We've lost uh, job creators. That's a bit of a bummer. It's going to hurt our uh, investment pool for sure. Yeah, look at that. It is a significant hit, but what are you going to do, right? It's okay. It's okay. We're still making a lot of money from the investment pool. We're still able to use it in a lot of places. We'll see if we can't find a way to uh, to make them happy. Hopefully, with increased uh, loyalists, we'll see their happiness continue to go up. I think that's what we lost. I think this was at plus 10 last I checked, and now it's down to plus 9. So, uh, hopefully, we'll have that covered. And, uh, you know, again, getting services for everybody, for example, is a great way to do exactly that. Because, again, pretty much everybody uses services. And even though the price is currently a, a acceptable price, it's very close to, you know, the expected relative price. If we just bring it down by a significant margin, then people will just have more spending money to spend elsewhere or save up and whatever else it might be. It'll just be better for, uh, for everybody, I think. Now, I do wonder if we can get rid of this gold stack over here as far as wine is concerned. We have a ton of farms that are producing fruits. We could perhaps get at least one to change its tune and produce something else instead. If we just head on over to our wheat farms here, for example, why don't we go ahead and get you using the vineyards and uh, see if we can't bring the price here down even just slightly. I know it's not a heavily consumed item, but uh, I, I think that should be fine. We can take a look at uh, Delhi and the... Uh, okay, I guess Delhi doesn't have any wheat farms. We can go ahead and take a look at, I suppose, South Bengal and its rice farms to just keep an eye on the price of fruit. And this is still staying very low, so we didn't really hurt it all that much. I think we'll be fine with this adjustment and, and if we can just make more people even happier then it's better for us all around right one more thing i'd like to address really quickly is the open north german market and how we got absolutely screwed by the game as it does give us a little gimme over here by making the industrialists uh, loyal once more so hey at least there's that right it's a little positive to look at over here as i tell you the uh, the bad news which is that this situation that has resulted in the uh, sort of separation of North German Federation territory into two uh, separate pieces is making it impossible for us to trade with these guys. And it's an absolute shame. And if you're wondering why, it's because this state here, East Prussia, is where the North German Federation's port actually is. Without that state, they no longer have a port. They don't have one up over here, which uh, again has a massive coastline and the ability to make ports, but no interest, I suppose. And over here as well, you'll see that they have the, again, opportunity to build a port, but uh, they're not pursuing it. But this is a real bummer. And it's just because whatever happened here happened, separating these guys and ensuring that East Prussia has absolutely no access to the North German market. And so we're not even able to import anything from here and uh, yeah, that's, you know, fantastic. That's uh, that's great. I'm glad we uh, I'm glad we invested in that. Right here it is still taunting us. They're free trade. My goodness. It's all right. I'm not all that upset about it. Again, pleased uh, about the good news about our industrialists being loyal once more and further improving the uh, investment pool and how much money it's acquiring per week. The game giveth and the game taketh away. Once more, the industrialists are merely happy. I think it is just the fluctuation of uh, loyalist count over here. That's okay. Hopefully, again, we'll solve that as soon as the uh, power plants are completed and we start providing those electric street lights and uh, bring some, again, yes, power to the people. Hopefully it works out as intended as we bring them uh, unlimited power, so to speak. Not not actually, obviously it's gonna be very finite at first, but eventually we'll invest in it enough to make it seem unlimited. Listen, we're gonna solve all the electrical issues in the Indian subcontinent within the span of a couple of years in the middle of fighting a massive war. And it'll be so impressive that the history books will talk about it for eons to come. But for the time being, We've unlocked Jeune École. Perfect timing game, thank you so much. While Monitor has begun spreading towards us, it seems. This should be interesting. I don't know if we'll be able to get it uh, 
onto our naval bases before the next war. I mean, I, I guess it'll just take 9 to 12 months to research, so we could pursue it. I don't know, rather, if we need it, truth be told. The extra offense and defense would be nice. The extra navy power projection would be nice as well, I suppose. But I'm not a big fan of the extra goods consumption there, I suppose. We'll, we'll see when the time comes, but uh, hey... I'm a fan of uh, the spread we're seeing there, and we'll see what else comes our way, of course. All right, now, as a bunch of these railways get completed across multiple states, we will hopefully see improved market access, and we'll hopefully also see, as a result of that, uh, better pricing for goods across the board, which should make businesses a bit more profitable and should make pops a bit happier, too, if they're able to more easily get what it is they're looking for, right? Now, what do we have here? The Voice of the Nation, a group of respectable musical composers teaching at the Arts Academy in South Bengal have approached us. They have drawn attention to the alarming lack of a proper national anthem fit to invigorate our people's spirits. Oh, that is very interesting. Land of mountains, land by the river, may all of our enemies shiver. Thus, our nation was made to the fire of the blade. Now that's a cool anthem. That adds to our prestige. Well, that's neat. This is actually really interesting for a few reasons. Um, South Bengal is actually the uh, birthplace of the person who wrote the Indian National Anthem, which was actually kind of the reason why I put the Arts Academy in South Bengal in the first place. He's uh, quite the poet. He's made quite a few important uh, pieces. He's also not just a poet, he's also just a writer in general, including, you know, plays and, and, and stories and all that good stuff. Uh, he was also a painter, he was a composer, a philosopher. I mean, this guy was a big deal. He also won the uh, Nobel Prize in Literature. In fact, I believe he was the first non-European to win the Nobel Prize in uh, Literature. So, pretty important dude. And uh, yeah, he wrote the Indian National Anthem. I do believe he also wrote the uh, Bangladeshi National Anthem, but feel free to correct me on that and to, to verify that. But yes, I believe he wrote uh, yes, two countries' national anthems, again, born in South Bengal, I believe, specifically in Calcutta, or Kolkata, if you will, and uh, this, I mean, I guess around this time he'd be in his, like, 30s or something, so uh, I suppose, yes, he'd be potentially in this alternate universe, he could be a teacher at an arts academy in South Bengal, uh, coming up with uh, this uh, alternate India's uh, national anthem. I just think it's so funny that this happened to work out because of uh, just an inside joke I was making to myself by establishing the Arts Academy in South Bengal, and lo and behold, here comes the National Anthem. That is that is pretty cool, uh, and I'll, I'll happily take that prestige as well. Quite neat. Thank you very much, game. What's funny, though, is that the uh, Arts Academies aren't even built yet, so I feel like that kind of fired a bit prematurely, but uh, hey, that's fine. It's uh, 17 weeks away. Perhaps it's during the preparation of the curriculum of what they're going to teach, right? It, it could be that. Whatever it is, uh, it's still fun to see. As I noticed, some interesting uh, updates over here with regards to the price of silk and uh, ironclads both. We should really look into this uh, just so that we're not uh, hurting businesses locally and, and also hurting our own uh, coffers, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, shipyards in South Bengal as well. Let's go ahead and build these guys up a little bit. And let's also go ahead and seek after some more silk. I do believe North Bengal is a producer of silk. Indeed it is. And uh, why don't we go ahead and pump these numbers up uh, to, let's say, a nice round 20. Sure. And I do believe we are now able to finish the power plants off, prioritize the silk plantations, and get the shipyards done shortly afterwards as well. Cool, that should work out nicely as we are about to bring power to Punjab and to the people at large. This is very exciting. Of course, it'll take some time for uh, power production to actually kick off. But folks, September of 1899 is when electricity was brought to the people of the Indian subcontinent. A massive change, a massive glimpse into what the future holds. We're just going to wait until enough power is being generated before we actually get those street lights using electricity as well. And at the same time, we should perhaps concern ourselves with this uh, warning of a bureaucratic shortfall should, yes, secret police become enacted. That's fine. We'll build more government admin buildings. There's no problem there. I think this might be the result of uh, the petit bourgeoisie no longer being influential or perhaps uh, losing their uh, loyalty. That must be it. Well, rather, it's a combination of the two. They've gone from being uh, influential and, you know, 
loyal to marginalized and loyal so their traits don't actually have an impact. If we empower them a little bit then uh, we'll get that extra boost back and it's not a bad thing to have because they are tremendously loyal, right? Like it's a huge gap between loyalty and uh, losing that loyalty at, at plus 10. So maybe, maybe, maybe it'd be worth uh, chasing after the uh, Petite Bourgeoisie. I've been kind of ignoring them in the past, but uh, we'll see what we can do about them. With future events, perhaps we'll keep an eye out for uh, pop attraction to this interest group. And it's not like we're hurting shopkeepers and clerks specifically or anything like that. So it really is just a matter of pop attraction, I think, and uh, pop attraction to other interest groups as well. Meanwhile, up over here, we have Gwalior demanding independence. I will politely decline. Thank you for trying, though, I suppose. Please don't come again. And uh, as we, yes, continue to generate some power over here, I think we're going to uh, start struggling uh, to see employment. Unless, no? Okay, looks like some people are beginning to use it for perhaps their heating. Uh, again, it can be used by pops of all wealth levels, right, for their heating needs. So electricity is already starting to be used, and hopefully we can uh, provide enough of it to uh, sort of lay off some of the other goods that were previously being used to provide heat. For example... Coal, right? Coal is also used to provide heat. And if we take a look at our market here, coal is once more tremendously expensive. Maybe we'll see this price get adjusted a little bit. It's at 40.9 right now. We'll keep an eye out for it because it would be nice to see this start to dip with electricity now being introduced. But I highly doubt we're producing enough electricity with just these, uh, you know, level five power plants in Punjab. Would be nice, but uh, I'm not going to get too excited before I start seeing results. At the same time, we are seeing the results of... Uh, <laughs> this uh, power plant on the, uh, the the engines over here. That that was gold for a moment there. So why don't we go ahead and preempt any potential problems by expanding the motor industries over here in Delhi. Let's get these guys up to level 15. I think that should be enough for the time being. And we'll just see how this plays out as again, they employ more and more people and these numbers start kind of dancing back and forth for the next little while. And since the investment pool is still making money as well with that positive change, why don't we go ahead and build up some of the uh, paper mills here in Punjab as well? Because again, uh, paper is used not just by our pops, but also by the government itself itself and uh, we could certainly reduce some uh, some of that cost because if we again take a look at our goods for government buildings I'm sure yeah paper is just one of the most expensive items on our uh, ledger <laughs> let's try and get those numbers down I think it will make a very big difference in fact why just go to 50 over here we could uh, apart from 50 up over there we could chase after paper mills elsewhere let's get these guys up to uh, level 10 sure and perhaps we'll seek uh, other opportunities as well down the line at some different states just to, again, spread the love and spread the employment opportunities, right? At the same time, it seems as though the Art Academy in South Bengal is actually going to open before the uh, new year as well. So before we get to the 1900s, we've actually accomplished a fair bit as far as uh, a new era in the subcontinent is concerned, including a uh, different kind of power. We now have the secret police. This should be absolutely massive for us. Again, the uh, reduction in political movement radicalism is huge for us as we constantly have political movements. And apart from that as well, if anybody tries to, you know, lead a revolution or a secession, we should at least be able to slow them down. Now, if we do take a look at our uh, institutions that come as a result of uh, the secret police, we have home affairs now at the bottom over here that can go higher if we have enough bureaucracy, I don't think that's necessary. We'll see how the reduction in political movement radicalism treats us in the near future. But uh, for the time being, we should just make sure that we're not seeing a deficit over here, even though despite the tax waste, we're still making plenty of money. It'd just be nice to not have tax waste to begin with and to make sure that our bureaucratic apparatus is working as it should, right? I mean, we're a proper nation. These are things that a proper nation should stay on top of. Let's get this up to uh, level 10 down over here in Mysore and uh, see what that does for us. Because apart from this shortfall, I actually want a surplus so we can invest in finally incorporating uh, Bombay and maybe some of the other states that I believe are still being left behind and unincorporated. So that's just something that I want to keep on top of as uh, over here we can see the uh, Arts Academy starting to uh, employ people slowly but surely, very slowly but surely, and uh, further strengthening the academics and the aristocrats as well. So we do have to be wary about that. We do have alternative uh, production methods available. I suppose we could go after photographic art that produces more fine art and more services, but it does consume more tools and paper. Looks as though uh, it doesn't make that much of a dent, I suppose, in the actual uh, goods consumption. So short, let's go after photographic art. If we chase after realist art, it just improves the fine art production and traditional art, of course, has its base numbers. So yes, let's go all the way up to photographic art. And over here, we can chase after perhaps ooh, independent artists. 
might not be a bad idea. That means more academics and academics have a tendency uh, to sort of push towards intelligentsia and trade unions. You can see some rural folk and armed forces as well, but uh, maybe I wouldn't mind empowering purely the academics as opposed to the, uh, you know, capitalists as well. Uh, yeah, sure. You know what? Let's 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 chase after the independent artists. Let's see what uh, these guys can come up with working on their own. Looking forward to uh, upturned urinals and uh, well, it's a little early for that. Obviously, it's also a little early for things like Dada, but uh, I'm sure we'll come up with some crazy cool things in the Indian subcontinent that the world has never seen before. We're going to produce so much fine art over here, way more, I think, than uh, people are interested in consuming locally. But as you can see, we're already the number five producer worldwide with just uh, two pieces of fine art being produced. Apart from the fine art, though, I'm pleased as well to see additional services being produced over here because that should, again, uh, just allow people to spend money elsewhere, right? On that note, though, it does look like the uh, power plant over here is close enough to being uh, sort of fully staffed that I'm willing to now head on over to our buildings, head on over to our urban centers and get them all using electric streetlights. Yes, it's going to cause a bit of an input goods shortage still, but uh, am I willing to take that risk right now? You know what? No, let's 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 be a little bit more reasonable. What if we just do it in Punjab? We're still going to see an input goods shortage. Very well, that's okay, that's okay. Good things take time. Let's go ahead and build the uh, power plant up to level 15 then. And it'll just take 30 weeks time and we'll be able to then invest in some of these electric street lights, I think, and uh, bring more services to the people. In the meantime, of course, the uh, arts academies are going to hopefully cover our bases there by producing more, uh, more services here. Though I'm just not sure how many academics are actually available to work at uh, the arts academy. We might actually need to allow um, capitalists in or even aristocrats because uh, we just don't have enough academics to, uh, to to fill all the roles here that does seem to be the case we'll uh, we'll make the adjustment for now and uh, as people become academics maybe we'll be able to actually switch over to uh, <laughs> to entirely independent artists very well bourgeoisie patronage it shall be we'll see if that uh, makes a difference I believe it will dang still struggling to uh, find employment over here or I should say employees I'm just not sure if we maybe try and export fine art and then that'll allow us to uh geez none of these are, are worth it at all they will hurt our trade routes so much okay fair enough fair enough but we might have over invested in the art academy over here but hey that's fair We'll see uh, development in, in due time, I'm sure, as we're already actually seeing some uh, some adjustments being made. Uh, again, we might want to consider migration being opened up. That's something I, I spoke about, I think, a couple of sessions ago. Uh, it would allow people to move a bit more freely between the states, and, and maybe that'll allow us to get more, you know, employment uh, movement going on in, in situations like this. So that's something to consider, though I'm just not sure uh, how long I should wait before pulling the trigger on something like that. It does remind me, though, that I should take a look at the next law we want to pass. I am kind of tempted to chase after the change of rights of women. But again, I just wonder about waiting for feminism here. Because then rather than wasting time, you know, getting propertied women, and then immediately afterwards going, dang, we now have women in the workplace available, I could simply just hold off, focus on something else, and then pursue women in the workplace uh, after we have feminism. That's my thinking right now. We could instead focus on, I suppose, proportional taxation. Who will that upset? The industrialists, which is not something I'm really looking forward to for the time being. Maybe once they're a bit more loyal, more solidly loyal, I should say, maybe we'll consider that change because the, the money isn't the biggest deal, right? It's plus 22K. There was a time when that meant the uh, you know end of the world, if you will, but uh, for now, that's basically nothing to us. So instead, why don't we take a look at, uh, yes, the migration options over here. We could introduce migration controls. This would appease the industrialists, the trade unions, and the petite bourgeoisie. It would upset the rural folk. So everyone we want to be made happier will be made happier. Uh, and with migration controls, we'll see that discriminated pops are disallowed from migrating, but uh, we don't have any discriminated pops. So this should be all we need to actually open up migration. Only people of cultures and religions not discriminated against may migrate, whereas with no migration controls, the country makes no attempt to control movement across its borders. But again, we are, uh, you know, <laughs> we don't have any discrimination in our glorious nation. So migration controls, it shall be 28% chance of uh, enactment every, what, year, it seems, uh, with the next checkpoint being in 1901. Can I introduce more of these uh, 
parties or interest groups, I should say, into our government. We have the trade unions, the industrialists, and the armed forces. If I bring the intelligentsia in, well, there'd be no point. They're not even supporters of this bill. It's the uh, petite bourgeoisie, but they're marginalized, so they can't step in. All right, it, it, it's fine as is. I mean, it's going to take a fair bit of time, but... Uh, We'll see what happens, and if I get interrupted, let's say, by the unlocking of feminism, maybe I'll allow that to interrupt me and for us to change our focus and pursue, uh, again, the rights of women and women in the workplace. It's also been brought up that I should perhaps consider uh, changing child labor laws. Maybe compulsory primary education is a good idea. It'll allow us to invest a bit more in our education institution, which will then further allow us to uh, increase our literacy a bit faster. Uh, though it does upset the industrialists, I shouldn't be surprised by that. Uh, and of course, there's also not too much support for it with just the 9.8% uh, chance of success every however many days. I don't think it's worth pursuing just yet, though I do eventually want to chase after it, maybe when the trade unions have become just a little bit stronger. Looks as though war reparations with Austria have now been broken, and that is of course going to uh, hit our economy, but uh, I think we'll be okay even without them. Uh, we'll see. Again, in a worst case scenario, we can always invest in our... Uh, tax efforts, right, and actually start taxing the people uh, in a proper way. Apart from that as well, as these paper mills get uh, upgraded and as they start to get uh, fully staffed once more, we're going to, yes, see the uh, cost of paper drop and hopefully just become a bit more uh, sustainable, suitable, fitting for, for what we're actually, um, you know, purchasing. It's just funny to me that in the midst of the Industrial Revolution, it is paper that is more expensive for the government than, uh, than literally coal itself. Either way, shift work has been unlocked over here, which is uh, going to allow us to get buildings using a higher economy of scale advantage as far as their throughput is concerned, which is all well and good. But what's even better is the spread of electrical capacitors. This will allow us to use some modern production methods for our textile mills in particular that I find very interesting because of the extra clothing production. But apart from that as well, we're going to get some additional options, as you can see, for uh, our chemical plants and our uh, textile mills as well. But again, we're trying to not hurt our laborers too much, right? Nonetheless, uh, this is an interesting development. I'm looking forward to this within the next, what, 9 to 12 months or so. That'll be very, very helpful for us because uh, clothing has always been a bit of an issue. And if we can, again, further reduce the price of clothes, then uh, many of our people will be a lot happier. Oh, apparently we've uh, established the photographic arts as uh, one of the journal entries. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at uh, the situation here with captured light and shadow. The interest in photographic arts throughout Punjab has spawned many new artistic movements experimenting with the technology. It can perhaps seem too harsh to capture reality as the human eye perceives it without any of the love or mercy of the human heart softening the image. However, by moving that responsibility from the artist to the observer, we hope to make people more aware of the contents of their own hearts. This is very interesting stuff. I mean, photography was a huge thing for uh, art in so many ways. People started using photographic references. Of course, photography introduced the uh, concept of, you know, quote unquote, photoshopping before Photoshop was even a thing. It is a fascinating part of art history. I uh, must say it was probably one of my favorite aspects to learn about when I was studying art history in university and stuff. It is very interesting and if you have even the remotest interest in history and and particularly how art reflects historical inventions and, 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 and concepts of like media truth and stuff, that history goes so far back. There's some uh, some, some really cool uh, cool touch points as far as yeah photography and uh, and other forms of art and art movements are concerned. Anyway, uh, this should be the new tool of news reporters everywhere, increasing ooh, society technology spread, okay. It should be used to capture the beauty of Punjab, improving the migration attraction, or we should put our efforts towards making these pictures come alive, making progress towards film. Listen, look, listen. How can I play in the Indian subcontinent without trying to recreate Bollywood, right? We have to do this, right? We can actually start researching it soon. It is a six year gap between now and then, obviously. But uh, look, I, 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 think, I think we might need to do this. I think we need to start uh, pushing towards film, at least as far as this advantage is concerned. That 4K progress will reduce that six year time count by a little bit. And we can uh, start hinting at the establishment of, yes, Bollywood, which might end up being the first film industry in our uh, alternate world. That would be cool. I mean, yeah, the extra migration attraction is okay, I guess. We don't really care so much about that. The extra tech spread speed for society is also not bad, but uh, nah, nah. Let's, let's, let's pursue Bollywood. We should put our efforts towards making these pictures come alive.
Good stuff. I couldn't resist. Ah, uh, the misfortune of another boiler explosion seems to be causing some trouble. Uh, we should say not that industry itself is a cancer, but that workers should not be exploited and forced into such conditions. Again, we like trade unions, so we do want to empower them wherever possible and make them happier too. Such a shame. Such a shame. And at the same time, we have additional government admin buildings about to be completed, which should hopefully help with our uh, bureaucratic shortfall and our uh, just financial situation as well as they produce both, you know, bureaucracy and tax capacity, right? And at the same time as well, the power plants are about to be completed too. I just don't know if that's going to be enough power generation or if we're going to need to push even further. And maybe I should consider having these guys be publicly traded as well uh, to get that good substitution happening and further employment of even more capitalists. These guys don't put money into the investment pool, but again, capitalists aren't necessarily our enemy at the current state of the world. Uh, we do like powerful industrialists, I suppose. Uh, so short, sure, let's go ahead and, and get these guys publicly traded. Why not? Just really hoping to see electricity become that much more available. I mean, we're doing a good job of uh, becoming a leading producer of it. We're already the number three producer worldwide. That's very exciting, actually. Who else is producing electricity? Great Britain has some very well. Uh, France, of course, Austria as well. Quite a few places are producing electricity, but uh, we're producing almost as much as Austria and, uh, you know, over half as much as uh, France, so pretty good stuff over here. What's less good is this sudden skyrocketing of a radical count. Why is this happening? Is this purely because of the political movements? Yes, 1.39 million from unfulfilled political movement demands, and that is both the uh, preservation of closed borders and the uh, reenactment of agrarianism. These rural folk are causing us a lot of trouble. I just don't understand why they do this to us. That really hurts. I mean, my goodness, we were doing so well for so long, and then all of a sudden, it's just like, bop, 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 done. And now we're uh, close to a one-to-one -one ratio again. Now, granted, loyalist number is increasing as well, which is nice to see, and standard of living increases are rather significant, which is also nice to see. And here as well, we can see uh, standard of living changes are allowing some of the radicals to drop off, but there's so much working against us at the same time, unfortunately. With the investment pool looking as good as it does right now, we should probably use some of that money. And I just want to point out that even without the uh, landowners being loyal, we're close to a quarter of a million uh, per week in uh, investment sourcing. So that's very nice to see. But yes, let's go ahead and invest some of that money. I do think we'll perhaps pursue more paper mills. Let's take a look at Punjab's infrastructure situation. It's looking all right. So why don't we go ahead and do this? Why don't we go ahead and get uh, the railway upgraded to level 30 and then also get the uh, paper mills over here upgrading to, uh, let's say, level 60 because uh, clearly we need a lot of paper. It's still very expensive and uh, despite losing our bureaucratic shortfall, uh, we're still seeing, you know, a, a decent hit to our uh, earnings because of the cost of paper. It still blows my mind. I don't think it'll ever not blow my mind. And we're still making enough money to uh, to see the investment pool grow. So why don't we go ahead and add another step over here and, and see what that does for us. Okay, let's go ahead and add a few more steps then and see what that does for us. Cool. That's fine. It needs to be drained, right? We can't just have it growing and growing and growing. As over here, ID documents have been unlocked, further increasing our taxation capacity and also increasing our home affairs institution investment. Uh, not that we want to do that right now, but it is nice to have that extra tax collection for sure. Looks as though ironclads remain quite expensive, so fair enough. Why don't we go ahead and get the uh, shipyards over here upgrading as well. And it does seem as though they're not as profitable as we would like them to be. Coal continues to be a bit of a problem, unfortunately. Again, hoping that the uh, proliferation of electricity will make coal a bit cheaper as people stop using it to uh, warm their homes. But at the same time, we should maybe consider ex exporting some of these steamers, maybe. I just no one's interested. No one that we can uh, ship out to at a decent enough quantity is interested. I, I guess we could send some over to the Ottoman market. It's a productive enough uh, option. Or do we have anyone we neighbor that's not going to hurt us too much? Nah, it's just not worth it. it it's The situation here is that um, these guys are just not making as much money as they could because they're not able to sell goods for as much as they would like. Obviously, we could solve the other end of the equation by Bose uh, establishing uh, more motor industries. Why don't we go ahead and upgrade the one at uh, Delhi by five steps? Sure. And why don't we also pursue more of these guys in, let's say, North Bengal. Let's see if we can further weaken the hold of the landowners up there, right? Because there are quite a few landowners still in North Bengal. And if we can just change the uh, spread of employment opportunities, we might see them get uh, just a little bit further weakened, right? Meanwhile, it looks like electricity is getting dirt cheap. Is it going to stay dirt cheap or are people going to start using it? And are we going to see fluctuations? Nonetheless, we are seeing a downward trend, which is promising in its own. 
Uh, so maybe we will uh, get some of those electric streetlights going. Let's take a look at Punjab. Let's take a look at our urban center here. And let's just see what it says. Oh, well, you look at that. No goods shortage. Now, I'm sure if we actually try and apply this to all urban centers across the board, we're certainly going to see the uh, goods shortage kick in. Yes, we are. But should we? No, that's too much. That's too much. Let's go ahead and do it in Punjab. Sure. And maybe we can pursue it in uh, North Bengal as well, or perhaps uh, Madras. That is our second largest urban center, I think. If we do it here, we'll see an input goods shortage. Very well. That's kind of what I was looking for. Uh, we could go ahead and yes, upgrade our power plants a little bit further and just invest a little bit more in uh, power generation. Like I said, I want to try and solve this problem once and for all. And since people are going to start relying on electricity to heat their homes and stuff as well. We want to make sure costs stay down. Otherwise, it will further radicalize our people, right? We are, by the way, now the number one producer of power worldwide, which is uh, bringing us a lot of prestige. So that's kind of cool to see. And if we just take a look at uh, our Arts Academy as well, we're the number two producer of fine art. That's awesome. Cool. Just behind France ever so slightly. That's not too bad at all. We could actually upgrade this bad boy a little bit. Or do we want to pursue... We can't pursue film art because uh, we don't have it unlocked yet. Fair enough, fair enough. Why don't we go ahead and uh, just upgrade you ever so slightly and see where that takes us as far as our prestige is concerned. While up over here we have a couple of situations with the uh, Indian territory about to be annexed by this horrendous flag. And uh, over here we have Great Britain going toe-to-toe -to -toe with La Hedge in an attempt to uh, annex them. Let it be, I do not want to extend our uh, truce with Great Britain. We are about a year out from declaring war on them, give or take a few months. So I want to stick to that timeline and uh, and just prepare ourselves for that uh, upcoming aggression. Meanwhile, on that note, should we perhaps build some more universities? Yes, we are nowhere near our innovation caps. So we're leaving a lot on the table. Down we go to Mysore to upgrade the university here. Let's actually prioritize that because uh, the sooner we get it, the sooner we can push towards more technology, right? So let's get that going ASAP. It'll take 14 weeks from now. And uh, hopefully that'll cover our bases as far as researching things a little bit faster is concerned. And expand power plants has been completed now. Wonderful stuff, a stable supply of power. The recent expansion of the power plants in Punjab has inspired faith in a future where all of Punjab is electrified. Trapping the power of the roaring rivers and waterfalls by transforming it to the power of a thunderstorm must be a sign that we are approaching the final stage of man's mastery of nature. Are we ready? Morally? Intellectually? Spiritually? It matters not. It is coming. Oh, I literally said unlimited power earlier. I can't not do this, get the extra throughput for the next five years, or we could pursue other ways to produce electricity, pushing us towards the steam turbine. Oh, that is interesting. It would unlock the coal-fired plant for power plants. It would consume additional engines as well as coal to produce even more electricity, uh, though it is, what, three years away? And will we focus on that next? Do I want to push that progress? No. No, because I don't know where it is in terms of our timeline. I'm going to uh, hold off on that. I'm, I'm okay with investing three years when the time comes, whenever it does come. Uh, but in the meantime, we could, I think, use that extra throughput for our power plants. Unlimited power. Yes, absolutely. Very pleased with that, folks. As we'll hopefully see the price of electricity drop and, uh, yeah, just uh, people be able to use it a bit more for a variety of needs, right? I mean, look at that instant drop with the extra throughput. Didn't even need the upgrades to complete. That looks amazing. If I can make it dirt cheap, that'll make me very happy. We might need to subsidize the power plants, but I think that's worth doing. I think that's worth investing in just because of uh, the spread and opportunity of its use, right? Meanwhile, it seems as though we have some foreign competition. Buddy, we are the foreign competition. People living in Delhi under dire conditions are afraid that the migration controls reform will increase competition in the job market. Whose idea was this? Probably someone who didn't have to worry every day if they would have work, so they would have pay so they would live. A rich immigrant never seems to be a threat to those who are already well off, but let me tell you, here down at the bottom, it's always crowded. Very interesting. If they can't compete, they deserve to lose their jobs, or Punjabi job seekers should be prioritized. This would hurt enactment success chance, whereas uh, telling them they deserve to lose their job would further reduce success chance and also radicalize the lower strata pops in Delhi. So wait, both of these are bad options and uh, prioritizing Punjabi job seekers is the less bad option. So very well, I suppose uh, we'll prioritize Punjabi job seekers. Absolutely. Such a shame. Our radical count has now surpassed our loyalist count. That is such a shame. And it continues to grow. These uh, political movements with their demands are just causing us so much trouble. I and mean, we just, we have, I think, so many rural folk 
obviously, right? We are still, in many ways, an agrarian nation, and uh, their, uh, their upsetness here is hurting us tremendously. That is really quite unfortunate. We'll see what we can do. Maybe we can somehow get this uh, to abandon its uh, its attempts at, at bringing closed borders or keeping closed borders. Just bummed out. <laughs> I'm just bummed out by seeing this. It'll take so long to reduce that number once more. I dare the rural folk to stand up in rebellion. Pick up those pitchforks and uh, and and show me your old ways. Hopefully of fighting. Don't don't pick up a gun, please. Or God forbid, shrapnel artillery. All right. Now, as these shipyards are being completed, I think I also want to pursue additional naval bases in North India. South India is uh, pretty well set, I would say. We have quite a few ships in South India with the 56 flotillas. Uh, we might need to give a bit of a promotion over here, but uh, overall, I think we're okay there. But North India only has the eight ships, so uh, we're not really able to move anybody anywhere. And even if we don't use these guys for naval invasions, we can't use them for anything else either without being worried about uh, interception and loss in general. So let's head on over to South Bengal and let's go ahead and upgrade the naval base over here by a few steps and see if maybe a level uh, 20 naval base is the right call. Again, this uh, does take longer to fill up than it does to actually build. So maybe rather than uh, just lining them up at the end of the queue, we should queue them up at the uh, front of the line and uh, we'll take a look at how long it'll take to build them all. You got three weeks time. And again, it'll take a long time to actually staff them up, but uh, we have about a year's time to, to do that and, and try and strengthen our uh, naval forces from North India. I do actually have plans with uh, both of our you know, sets of navies, let's say, or both of our sets of uh, flotillas or whatever you'd like to call it. So I do want them to both operate at decently uh, strong numbers and, and, and with decent capabilities in isolation. Now, on the topic of all this war-related stuff, I notice here that a general has died. Really quite unfortunate as... <gasps> Karak Singh, my goodness, you can't just call them a general. You cannot just call the Maharaja a general. He was loved. At the age of 100, he has passed away, and in his stead, we now have who? We now have, of course, his son, Diwan Singh. Bigoted. Just the one trait. Wonderful. At least that gives him extra authority, I suppose, but it hurts his influence and also increases radicals from discrimination. Fortunately, we don't have discrimination. And yet, somehow, the former Maharaja's child grew up to be bigoted. Wonderful stuff. Wonderful stuff. He is disliked and he is but 19 years of age. Hopefully, his reign is uh, not full of horrendous happenings. Nonetheless, that is an unfortunate uh, event. And it is an unfortunate uh, way to represent it. Again, this is just funny to me. He's not hes not just a general, my goodness. My goodness. I almost missed that, in fact. Almost missed the death of our Maharaja, who did a lot for the subcontinent, mind you. He accomplished a great deal. He will be famed in the uh, subcontinent, but he will live on in infamy, I think, the world over, at least until uh, we get to write all the history books after we supplant Great Britain. Good stuff. Looks like the uh, petite bourgeoisie has become influential once more. That gives us middle managers, increasing our bureaucracy and treasury bonds as well, reducing the loan interest rates. Remember, we are still technically in debt uh, because we're just not too fussed about it. Uh, but uh, but, but that, that, that does help at least reduce the impact of that debt and how much interest we have to pay. Seems as though we're struggling with coal. That's unfortunate. South Bengal has not got full Punjabi market access, so that might be the issue instead. Why don't we go ahead and establish some uh, railways over here because we can't upgrade the ports any further. So the railway upgrades will hopefully do the trick. We'll prioritize that, of course. And the port over here, right, suffering from coal shortages as well. We should maybe look at importing more coal to the Qing market is willing to supply, so why don't we go ahead and take some, and we'll take some from the Burmese market as well. Coal is going to be one of those things we need an endless supply of, so why say no when there are options available that don't even take any convoys, right? So that should be quite nice for us, and already we've got rid of the shortage at the very least. We'll see what else we can do uh, with regards to that, because that, that is certainly problematic, and, and we need to stay on top of that at all times. The original reason I came here, though, was to check out the uh, naval base, just to see how its uh, employment is going again it takes a very long time to uh, top these guys up which is why i wanted to build it sooner rather than later because it'll take probably until the beginning of our diplomatic play at the very least to even get uh, to 10k and uh, the you know resulting flotillas that comes from the increased uh, employment at the naval base oh this is not good 
Looks as though we have the leader of the uh, intelligentsia, Kapur Alawalia, dying. And as a result of his passing, the intelligentsia have become extremely upset. My goodness, this new guy is a radical. So I don't think he's a big fan of, yes, us as the uh, king. He's not a big fan of outlawed dissent or even the censorship that we have going on, nor is he a fan of secret police. This guy is upset on so many fronts. That is not good. That is not good at all. I don't think I can do anything to actually change his mind. And with social criticism, we're going to see reduced prestige. Not the end of the world, but I also don't want these guys diving into uh, various political movements and causing us trouble in that way, right? So that's a bit of a bummer, but uh, hey, it is what it is. Not much we can do about that, I suppose. Looks like we have yet another brave engineer here. We're going to go ahead and say that Railmen should get more than a song for dying on the job. Again, we want that extra political strength from trade unions. We also want to see their interest group approval go higher and higher because uh, we quite prefer trade unions to some of the others in our nation. Now, trade unions have been gaining clout over the last little while. I mean, we're seeing a bit of wavering up and down, but by and large, we're seeing an upward trend for the last, I would say, five or so years, which is very promising because, again, trade unions are a very powerful full interest group as far as some of the things that we're chasing after in terms of uh, policy changes, right? Especially further down the line as, uh, ooh, that was an interesting change. We saw that huge dip at the end of this chart uh, flip and become a positive. Well, that's great. So again, overall upward trend, which we want to push higher and higher so we can make them powerful because when they're happy and when they're loyal, we get some really nice benefits. When they're happy, we can see a plus 10% to manufacturing industries throughput, which is absolutely huge. And if they were actually powerful with a clout of 20%, this would be a plus 20%. And then separately, if we take a look at solidarity when they're loyal we get an extra bit of workforce ratio and again if they were powerful this would be plus 20 percent as opposed to plus 10 percent a bigger workforce means more people are of course working which means more people are making money which means more people are accumulating wealth accumulated wealth results in higher literacy rates and higher literacy rates results in faster technology and apart from that accumulated wealth also results in higher standard of living and I actually haven't hovered over this in a very long time. Things are looking quite nice. I mean, the Indian subcontinent is quite green and very vibrant greens too. I mean, there are a few spots that are somewhat desaturated and, you know, more of a gray green, but I mean, this is looking pretty good overall and that makes me very happy. Now, what makes me unhappy is the continued increase of radicals. My goodness, plus 2.82 million over the last year and we can see plus 2.47 of those are from uh, political movement demands that have been left unfulfilled again these rural folk are quite numerous and they're very upset about us trying to uh, open up the borders even slightly we really have to do something about this and i do have some plans uh, particularly in north bengal where they are uh, sort of the most concentrated hopefully some of those plans will kick in a gear and help bring their clout down because they've been growing Wow, immensely strong over the last 10 years. My goodness, is that accurate? That is insane to see. We really have to do something about this. Again, having Nahal Dillon as a vice admiral has been helping them tremendously. Uh, that's not very good at all. And their uh, experienced political operator leader is also helping them quite a bit. But we have to make some moves. And I think particularly in North Bengal, we have to make some moves to try and just reduce how many people are actually in the rural folk interest group, right? That's the main source of their clout is just how many people are supporting them in places like North Bengal and providing that political strength. But with the unlocking of Wargaming, we're actually going to get to work on that right away. I was waiting for exactly this for a couple of things, and I do just want to highlight something quite impressive here. You might recall that uh, when we picked Wargaming to research, it was going to be about three years for us to unlock it which would have taken us to just before our diplomatic play would have started in August of 1902, right? It is now November of 1901, so we are well ahead of schedule. I believe this was supposed to be completed in like July of next year, so we're quite ahead of schedule, and that's largely because of our improved literacy rates, our improved innovation, and uh, just our dedication to the cause of, yes, enlightenment, I suppose. So this is very exciting to see because it feels like cold, hard evidence that our investment is actually paying off, and this return on our investment is going to be applied immediately to our barracks and conscription centers. Now, on that front, I want to point out a couple of things based on some of the comments I've seen. So first of all, let's get the conscription centers using the siege artillery. And as I go to click this, I just want to point out, as you can see, ammunition and artillery use will be 
absolutely through the roof when these conscription centers all get activated, if that should ever come. So that's something to keep in mind for a future point I'm about to make in just a handful of minutes. But apart from that, yes, let's take a look at our barracks. You might recall that we only enabled trench infantry for all of our uh, barracks in North India, but all of our troops in South India were involved in battle across a multitude of wars. And so last session, we kept them using skirmish infantry uh, with the intent to change them over to trench infantry when the opportunity presented itself. I waited though, I didn't do it right away immediately after that war was done, and that's because, as you'll see, when we actually activate a change in production methods, the barracks that uh, has made that change, for example the one in Mysore, is going to see the negative 75% from equipment adjustment, and that applies of course to their offense and defense. Now, over the course of 12 months, this decays and becomes smaller and smaller, but if in the middle of that 12 month period, you make a different change to a different production method, this resets to negative 75. So rather than go through that, you know, one and a half times or whatever, I figured we'll just make that change once, uh, have all of our barracks flip over to the uh, siege artillery and trench infantry at the same time as we've just done. And that way, if we head on over to Punjab, which only changed its artillery method, you'll see that these guys are also suffering from negative 75% for uh, offense and defense for the next 12 months. But again, if we look at a South Indian uh, barracks as well, you'll see that these guys are also just suffering negative 75%. So rather than get uh, that penalty happening early and you know all of a sudden find ourselves in a fresh war, I figured we'd wait until we could make both of these changes at the same time. Separate to that, I also want to address some comments I saw with regards to our uh, empty slots, so to speak, uh, especially with regards to specialist companies and yes, recon as well. Now here's the thing. I have maybe some degree of regret that I didn't chase after the uh, motorized recon option because we could have researched the combustion engine and got that done within three years time and that would give us access to uh, slightly higher offense, defense and provinces captured every time we had a successful attack. However, acquiring oil would become a whole thing, uh, producing automobiles would become a whole thing. So. I was a little hesitant about that, so while I say I do regret it, it's only to a certain degree. Separately, we could chase after bicycle messengers, but again, for that we'd need access to rubber, uh, though we'd also have to chase after vulcanization, which we're not even able to research anytime soon, though it might not be a bad idea to uh, pursue this. It would take 14 months for rubber mastication and 14 months for vulcanization, and then we'd be able to get uh, bicycle messengers, which again helps with offense and uh, provinces captured. And uh, the same thing kind of goes for these guys over here with our specialists. Some of you were suggesting I should chase after machine gunners because it would add all of these modifiers to a slot that is otherwise doing nothing. And you're absolutely right. However, just as a reminder, to get the automatic machine guns technology, we would have to spend, I think at the time it was three years uh, plus another three years for the automatic machine guns technology itself, if memory serves me correctly. I feel like it was more than that, but let's say six years. That means we'd still be doing research and we'd still have the empty slot because we'd still have to research automatic machine guns at the time that I wanted to kick off our next war. I did not want to delay this next war any further because every time we do that, we open up the door for the British to perhaps research additional technology that keeps them ahead of us. So I wanted to get to this war ASAP, which is why I wanted to do siege artillery because at least I knew I would have that before the next war rather than chasing after say, yes, machine gunners, which I would, I would definitely not have for our next war, delaying that next war potentially, and then finding ourselves still on the back foot because, you know, the British managed to get God knows what else, I don't know, chemical weapon specialist or something. So just thought I'd play it safer that way. But now with that said, we are, yes, going to go ahead and uh, move our research towards the bolt action rifle and then the automatic machine gun so that we can get the machine gunners. We could have stormtroopers in time for our next war. Rather, I should say we could have infiltrators in time for our next war. Oh my goodness, that is tempting. We would have to secure radio production or the import of radios which is something I think we could do, or we still just chase after, yes, the machine gunners. We wouldn't need any other production methods or any other technology or anything like that to, uh, to get machine gunners happening. And these guys would be a lot more helpful in uh, defense and that kill rate is quite impressive too. You know what, fine, we'll stick with machine gunners and uh, hopefully I've made the right choice there. I think I have. At the same time, over here, we have a city of plenty, but before we deal with that, I want to deal with North Bengal because as I said, I was waiting for that new tech before we started making changes here to again, try and control the strength of the rural folk. Now, the first order of business is actually going to be to build up some of the uh, railway over here. We're going to prioritize that, get it up to level, uh, let's say, let's say level 
12 should do the trick for now because as you can see there is an infrastructure situation over here but even after this current uh, set of construction we're probably going to have to get the railway upgraded even further because yes we're going to be building a lot more in North Bengal. The motor industries over here should be influencing quite a few people into these new jobs and if we just take a look at the workforce for a moment over here you'll see if we highlight say the engineers these guys are largely going to be in trade unions or as industrialists or armed forces, etc, etc. Very few of them, if any, are going to join the rural folk. So by providing these alternative options for employment, we should hopefully see the rural folk weaken in strength as uh, members of that interest group find work elsewhere and then join different interest groups because they've become engineers or they've become machinists who also tend to be uh, trade union members. Uh, of course, these spaces do also need laborers, but uh, as you can see, laborers in some of these spaces will also pursue the trade union interest group. And of course, we can always make adjustments by uh, changing some of our automation methodologies, right? This is where reducing the employment of laborers can come in handy. We're not gonna do that though. We don't want unemployment, so we're gonna leave it as is for the time being and we're going to try and continue that pressure by getting the uh, munition plants set up over here and by getting the arms industries set up over here as well we're going to go ahead and uh, get these guys leveled up to at least level five i think that should be enough for the time being and hopefully that'll help keep the cost of goods in check as well as far as the you know added pressure to ammunition artillery and small arms are concerned with our new production methods that we've just now enabled separately as well in south bengal we're going to actually get the uh shipyards over here changing their production method too. Again over here because of the low low price of steamers we're seeing a struggle in uh, making money on a weekly basis which in turn results to a struggle in maintaining a decent cash reserve and of course a struggle in finding employees as well. So this is very much not Good. So, what are we going to do over here? Not just in South Bengal, but in our shipyards across the nation, which I believe includes uh, Madras, yes. We're going to get these guys chasing after extensive military shipbuilding. That still produces steamers, just fewer of them, and it also increases the production of ironclads. That'll make these guys a lot more profitable. It'll also make steamers a bit more expensive while cheapening ironclads, which should, I think, overall make things cheaper for the government and improve our budget as well. So let's go ahead and uh, pop that switch, and hopefully we'll see much better profitability for our shipyards, and that'll then give more money to the uh, employees at said shipyards as well. So this is all looking very promising. I'm uh, looking forward to some of these changes kicking in, and, and hopefully we'll see these power plants as well. Yeah, get done over here in Punjab, which would ultimately allow us to, once more, yes, uh, reduce the cost of services across the nation as we get the electric streetlights across the nation. But yes, back to the City of Plenty, where we will say that yes, the party will never end. Hopefully, that'll allow us to counter this uh, situation over here. Yes, excellent. We gained a few more loyalists, uh, just under 7 million there, while this radical count continues to go higher and higher. My goodness, I'm very much looking forward to uh, shutting the rural folk down, and perhaps we should actually make a mark of this hopeful turning point around the 6th or let's say 4th of December 1901. We've started to make an actual effort in reducing the clout of the uh, rural folk. I do not like the look of this. France have started to damage our mutual relations. Currently, our relations are neutral, but their attitude towards us is antagonistic. That's very frightening, I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, France needs to be kept appeased, we need to keep them in check. We are currently trying to improve our relations with them. There are a few other things we could do. I mean, we could try and perhaps, uh, I, I don't know, take on their debt. They're not gonna agree to that. We could start bankrolling them. It's gonna cost us, what, 115k per week? Okay, that's a bit much, uh, but it would improve our relations and perhaps force them to have an obligation uh, that they'd owe us. It's not worth it, I don't think, but... Uh, I am just a little concerned about this label over here, antagonistic. They view us as a threatening force, which is, you know, cool, but uh, hopefully they don't decide to try to cut us down, obviously. And yet another diplomatic play involving Great Britain. They are trying to annex Hejaz, who are fighting for their independence. Unfortunately, we will not be stepping in here as much as I would like to. I do not want to prolong our uh, truce, right? We're very close to being able to declare war or at least our diplomatic play. So I do not want to delay that further. But uh, Hejaz will be top of mind when it comes time to uh, setting our war goals, I suppose. I have a few things planned out. We'll see exactly what we can pull off. And it won't be too long before we can try to pull all that off. Unfortunately, though, Hejaz will have to uh, suffer in the meantime. 
they're probably going to back down just to avoid the loss of life, right? I just want to make note of the uh, political strength of the rural folk in North Bengal as well. Right now it's at 36.3 million. I just really want to track how much of a difference our efforts actually make as their clout has dropped a little bit, but I feel like that change could be considered a bit of an outlier. I mean, this kind of wiggling back and forth happens all the time. 0.2% is not that much. But yes, I do want to keep an eye on their clout, their population, which is currently at 9.8 million. And uh, yes, their political strength here, 36.3 million. Uh, we'll check in a couple times and hopefully the changes will be big enough that I don't have to actually try and, you know, flip back to this moment in time and see exactly what it used to be. The Ottoman Empire has uh, joined Hejaz. That's interesting. Great Britain is still confident, but uh, this might mean war. I don't think Hejaz will back down with the support of the Ottoman Empire. And I'll be quite curious to see if anybody else decides to toss their hat in the ring uh, for Hejaz as well. Ah, oh, that's quite unfortunate. Hejaz did in fact back down. I was quietly hoping this would uh, blow up into a full-blown war because there were a few benefits to uh, having Great Britain be distracted by other fronts in other wars while we plot and plan against them. But it's not to be. It's fine though because I do have a plan that uh, should give us the upper hand as Great Britain kicks off yet another diplomatic play, this time against Oman. Alright, I mean hopefully these guys won't back down, though they are fearful so chances are they will. Great Britain's also going to puppet the True Seal States. Oh, I don't like that. And they want to subjugate Measure Teen. Not sure I know exactly where that is, but uh, I'm sure they have a plan here. Looks as though Persia has uh, started mobilizing. Hopefully they're going to help their uh, Omani brothers and sisters out and, and they'll actually go to war over here. Again, I do really want Great Britain to be distracted elsewhere. There are only so many puppets I can free when we win our war and I'm just not sure who's going to uh, be on that ticket. I'd like to get everybody on that ticket, but we only have so many maneuvers we can use, so we'll have to wait and see and uh, plan our decisions based on their value to us and the world at large. Now on the topic of value, it looks as though the investment pool has been growing for quite some time now, so why don't we go ahead and take a look at some opportunities to uh, develop things a bit further with their money. It looks as though the infrastructure situation in uh, North Bengal is still not looking too hot, and that's probably because these railways are actually still not done being upgraded. Another five weeks needed there. These guys are obviously still not uh, anywhere near being completed either. Why don't we go ahead and uh, yeah, get some more railway upgrades going. Sure, let's get these guys up to sure, 16 is a nice round number, and uh, that should hopefully eat up all the money from our investment pool, and perhaps then some, taking some from the government instead afterwards. But again, that's okay as over here we see what dissenters breaking ranks again still no luck with migration controls but what do we have here to outside observers the trade unions may appear firmly committed to the idea of migration controls but behind this facade of unity discord has long festered fair enough may the devil take these splitters it would hurt the trade union strength and our enactment success chance or we could loosen our purse strings to try and get some of them back. That is tremendously expensive for the next two years as we're about to kick off a war. And it still hurts the enactment success chance and uh, pop attraction. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. This is very unfortunate. You know what? Fine. I guess we'll make the investment. And uh, in a worst case scenario, again, we'll go ahead and take a look at uh, actually taxing the populace. I, I can't help but highlight this every time this kind of a situation comes up. We are barely taxing people and uh, we're trying to uplift them, right? We, we want to make them richer. We want to make them uh, more literate and all that good stuff. Uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a risk I'm willing to take, I suppose. And uh, hopefully it uh, pays dividends as over here. What do we have? Ooh, tempting, tempting, very tempting. Oman is actually trying to sway us. It's not too often that we see such an opportunity, such an overture. Uh, but unfortunately, we're going to have to decline. I feel so bad for Oman. Uh, but our, our our fight with Great Britain will be much bigger than anything that's happening in the Middle East right now. So we will decline and uh, allow them to suffer their fate, it seems. My goodness, I feel so bad about that. But again, we have a plan, and that plan is already in motion. It would be a shame to set it aside for, you know, a small victory here when there's a much, much bigger thing at play, right? All right, these power plants are uh, close to being done, I think, as far as upgrades are concerned. Uh, again, hopefully we're going to see a drop in the price of electricity, which will allow us to get uh, more electric streetlights uh, across the board. Again, I do believe that uh, the investment pool does not actually pay for power plants. That is government money. And uh, so there's not much we can do about that as far as, uh, you know, free progress, I suppose. But yeah, it looks like we're making some progress here, at least as far as the, the cost of, uh, of electricity is concerned. We could speed time up a little bit further just to see how much more quickly we see these uh, dips in the chart. 
promising enough. Why don't we head on over to our uh, urban centers and just see if there's one we could switch, perhaps the one at Bombay. If we get you using electric streetlights, looks like we'll be okay. Fair enough. And how about over here in uh, Kashmir? It's a smaller one, so we might be able to, yeah, pull it off. Let's go for it. And uh, maybe in North Bengal, that's a larger one. So, oh, looks like we're still good. Okay. Okay, this is very promising. South Bengal, how about you, buddy? No warnings yet. Wow, are we really producing that much electricity? That's fantastic. My goodness, Madras. I mean, you're a bigger one, so this will probably be too much. No. Okay. You know what? I feel as though... We might be able to get electric streetlights across the board over here in Delhi as well. Something's up. Something's not right. The tooltips must be malfunctioning here. This is uh, fantastic. Balochistan, you're the last one here. There it is. Oh no, actually no. It's just a qualifications issue because Balochistan is fully employed and hopefully having uh, more open borders is hopefully going to help uh, Balochistan acquire more uh, employees down the line. But for the time being, we can certainly activate electric streetlights and see what that does for us. And uh, that should be, yeah, that should be pretty good as far as producing services is concerned. We can take a look at our market. We can take a look at uh, the production here. Oh yeah, this is looking very good. Negative 11%. That's not too bad. And again, once employment and stuff fills up and, and once people are actually in place, maybe this number will uh, become even smaller. Maybe this negative will be even more negative and people will be able to pay uh, very little for services, though I think that's probably wishful thinking. Nonetheless, I'm glad to see across all of our urban centers we are using, yeah, electrical streetlights. That's, that's fantastic. I could have sworn there was an achievement having to do with... Uh, getting electric streetlights while being an autocrat. And have we not fulfilled that? I mean, are we not, uh, you know, in, in a position to, to, to get that? Because we are still, if we take a look at our laws, uh, an autocracy. So why has that not uh, popped there? Anyway, it is what it is, but I hope that's not a sign of things to come because that would be very disappointing. Uh, with that said, though, let's go ahead and make sure that uh, electricity remains cheap. It's become rather expensive right now. So let's go ahead and upgrade these power plants by another, I say, perhaps five steps. And we'll get those at the top of the queue, even though we're not really filling our queue out because of uh, financial restrictions which are really non-existent. What am I even thinking here? We have so much money from the investment pool. As down over here, Oman has backed down. Man, that is such a bummer. British uh, hegemony in uh, the Middle East is a terrifying thing. They're going to have access to so many resources that are going to help them in the future. And I'm just a little concerned about what we've let happen over here, even though our upcoming war is just a couple of months away. So we got to think about the wins there. We have to think about the bigger picture. That's what I keep telling myself. Hopefully I've played my cards right. Separately, I think it's important that we pursue steel mills alongside uh, furniture, both luxury and regular and clothing, because that tends to be the uh, you know top requests across our uh, nation, right? So let's head on over to North Bengal, just check their infrastructure situation. Still not perfect. So we'll invest a little bit in the railways here. Oh no, in 10 weeks time, it might actually be okay. So rather than doing that, we're going to go ahead and yes, invest in the steel mills in uh, North Bengal to again, further improve the opportunity or possibility of reducing the number of rural folk here up to level five, I think for steel mills. And separate to that, we're going to go ahead and get the furniture manufactories in Punjab leveled up perhaps to uh, 50. Sure, why not? And we're going to go ahead and pursue a similar type of upgrade for our textile mills here, getting them up to level 30. I'm really hoping that'll make a decent enough difference. While we might also need to consider better infrastructure in the region, we'll see when all this construction is done and uh, make some adjustments accordingly if need be. But really hoping to see some of these prices go down while the price of hardwood continues to cause us issues. If we try to import hardwood, we're not seeing any decent numbers over here, unfortunately. Despite our convoy count, it's just not enough. Wow, really? We need that many more convoys? My goodness. That's okay. Pretty soon we'll have access to more convoys, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a short matter of time. Uh, but for the time being, we'll have to suffer under these higher prices, or of course, we can expand the logging camps where in, uh, let's say, Pashtunistan. Sure, they've got plenty of peasants, but not too many. We'll go ahead and uh, upgrade this all the way up to level 6, top it up, as the monitor has been unlocked for our naval bases. I do not know if I actually want to enable them now, because despite the additional offense and defense that they'll give us, uh, they'll also require more ammunition. And on top of that, of course, there is the penalty that'll last for at least 12 months, and uh, we're about to go to war, right? So we'll leave the monitors for the time being. I'm fairly confident we're not going to need them. Hopefully I don't get proven wrong immediately after the war begins, right? Meanwhile, it seems as though the rural folk in North Bengal have only grown more powerful. What is this nonsense? I'm trying to... Oh my goodness, that's not good. I mean, if we take a look at the workforce in the motor industries, I mean, sure, quite a few of them are... Uh, you know, joining the, the rural folks still, but uh, I was really hoping that they'd be outnumbered by uh, the ones joining the trade unions. And 
it seems to be working to a degree. Some folks join the industrialists, some folks join the trade unions. It seems to be working, yes, to a degree, but uh, those rural folk are still getting uh, some support. Now, we do have the uh, decree active over here that promotes social mobility, but uh, it's, you know, maybe going to take some time for these changes to happen. We'll see. We'll see. As there are some issues over here as far as the minimum expected standard of living for some of our uh, engineers. Hopefully, we'll see these changes get made because, again, we are still waiting for uh, additional profitability with the reduction in the price of steel. And hopefully that'll be uh, all we really need. Now, again, this is a situation where we might want to switch things over to the water tube boilers or perhaps the rotary valve engine just to reduce the number of laborers we have employed because they, again, are by and large going to be joining the uh, rural folk, right? Though, I mean, again, it's just a matter of time, I feel. Let's let's leave it be for the time being and uh, make some adjustments later on if we deem it still necessary. Meanwhile, we have uh, self-propelled torpedoes now spreading. That should be quite uh, helpful as we'll be able to get uh, torpedo boats as an additional production method for our naval bases. Again, they help our offense. They hurt our defense a bit, but they also help how effectively we can raid convoys. And that's going to become more and more useful as we move forward with aggressive wars you know, overseas, uh, especially in the war that's coming up, because I do have some plans that involve uh, convoy raiding. But of course, these torpedo boats are not going to be ready for another 13 months. And uh, that means they're not going to be ready for this upcoming war, right? Oh, this is very interesting. Great Britain has started an open market diplomatic play against Siam. I don't know if this will escalate to war again. Siam is rather fearful. But I just wonder if I'll be able to join this diplomatic play while also kicking off my own against Great Britain. Again, we're only a handful of days away now from uh, being able to declare our diplomatic play, right? 11 days away. So can I dive into both and keep Great Britain out of Indochina while at the same time having them suffer some significant losses? Like I said, they're not going to opt to back down from the diplomatic play I have planned. We're going to hurt them so very, very much. They will uh, absolutely not back down down because if they do well they're going to suffer some major consequences without putting up a fight at the same time on the topic of major consequences it seems as though the uh, leader of the industrialists has died that was uh, ganda singh dogra uh, he has been replaced by who whoever it is uh, they are definitely less happy with us than uh, his uh, predecessor. If we take a look at the industrialists, we have Kapoor Singh. He is a radical and that is of course hurting his opinion of the uh, government because of his hatred of autocracy and my goodness. My goodness, that's not good because Job Creators was extremely helpful for us and uh, as a powerful interest group, their uh, you know benefits from this were, were doubled and, and now we're so far away from loyalty over here. That is a, a serious, serious bummer. My goodness. Um, yikes, you can see just how much of a difference that made. It's okay. Look, I'm not going to get too upset about that. We'll work on improving our relations with them and hopefully get their approval up to that loyalty. Uh, but listen, we have much bigger fish to fry in just about eight days time, right? So uh, let's stay focused on the uh, bigger picture as the political economy seems to be causing some issues between trade unions and industrialists. Do you believe that you create value purely out of your own visions? You can only persist in those delusions because you never see the hands below you that do the work. Those hands would be idle were it not for the minds at work, which you never see acting above you. My goodness, this kind of stuff is, uh, oh boy. Capital drives progress would upset the trade unions. Workers deserve the fruits of their labor would upset industrialists. Or we could get them to try and set class conflict aside for the common cause that'll further hurt our authority, which is already looking pretty rough. And the lower this goes, the uh, lower the approval rating of opposition interest groups will go as well. I think I'm willing to risk that rather than further upsetting either trade unions or uh, the industrialists, right? Because I like our trade unions being happy to get that extra manufacturing industry throughput. And I like our industrialists being happy as well to just get us moving further and further along the tech tree uh, in their own category here, right? So fair enough, we're going to get them to try and set their class conflict aside for the common cause and take that hit to our authority. My goodness, that is no joke. Negative 4.3 might actually be worse for us than just hurting one of the lot. As you can see over here, the landowners have gotten rid of family ties, reducing our influence, and uh, the rural folk have uh, activated old ways as well, hurting our tech spread. So uh, that's a bit of a bummer, unfortunately. But it's time to set those bummers away, folks, because we're about to make some moves with regards to our upcoming diplomatic play. Now, granted, I've waited just a little bit too long to do this. We should be declaring our diplomatic play in about four days' time, but 
as a bit of a fool, it slipped my mind that we have not yet declared an interest in England, and that is going to be absolutely essential for the moves we're about to make. Let's go ahead and do that, and since we have quite a few more uh, available, why don't we go ahead and express our interest in uh, Shore the rest of British territory too. That'll include the entirety of these North Sea holdings uh, under Scandinavia as well. And why don't we also chase after the Caribbean and Central America because I do believe there are British holdings there as well. So let's make our intents clear. And why don't we go ahead and make our intents even more clear by on this rather uh, special date of August 15th, declaring a rivalry with Great Britain. Let's go ahead and pursue this, not just for the extra influence, but also for something rather special that'll be a key part of our diplomatic play when the time comes. So for the time being, we are, of course, waiting for the interest to actually become activated so we can make our moves. And yes, it does mean we'll be a bit delayed, unfortunately. But hey, at least we were able to commemorate August in some way with that declared rivalry. And in just a few, I think, weeks time, we should be able to dive into our diplomatic play and uh, get some serious work done. At the same time, we can uh, enjoy the fruits of our labor over here as the rural folk have once more been brought down with regards to their political strength, and uh, they are now uh, seeing just a political strength of 39 million in North Bengal, so that's nice. Unfortunately, though, their clout seems to still be trending upwards, so uh, we can only celebrate so much as uh, down over here, unfortunately, Siam seems to have backed down. My Goodness, you couldn't have waited just a few more days. If I'd been just a bit more on the ball with regards to my interests, then we might have been able to support Siam over here. But hey, listen, there's only so much we can do. We're uh, juggling quite a lot all at the same time. Tons of spinning plates over here as we manage the development of our nation in so many different ways. Uh, so it's okay. A few things slip past us. It's not the end of the world, uh, but it will be the end of the world for Great Britain in just, what, maybe a few days' time now as our interest in England, the North North Sea, the Caribbean, and Central America have all now been activated. And uh, as those notifications come through in the bottom right corner, we're going to go ahead and, uh, yeah, make some moves that uh, will completely shake the world. So, first of all, why did we declare that rivalry? Well, it's so that we can kick this war off with the intent to humiliate Great Britain. This is going to hit their prestige by a significant margin. Once we defeat them in this war, we're going to see them suffer a lot of damage to their uh, prestige as it is because of the other war goals I intend on uh, involving. But uh, beyond that as well, we're going to see a further, I believe it's 25% reduction because we're going to be humiliating them at the same time as making these moves. And if we just take a look at Great Britain right now, we'll see that their prestige is at 1757. So if we cause enough damage to that, then we'll actually see them become just a major power. We have to get the prestige to below 671 for an extended duration in order to make that happen. So all the moves we make against Great Britain need to be big ones, and uh, I do have some serious plans on that front. Keep in mind that a lot of their prestige is coming from their gross domestic product, some of it is coming from the same of their subjects, and quite a bit of it is coming from their military and naval power projection, while uh, a bit more of it, not as much, but a bit of it, is coming from uh, their production and, and how they're the number one or number two or three producer of a variety of goods. So if we can strike at all of those things at the same time, we're going to see a wonderful, wonderful situation as far as the prestige of Great Britain is concerned. But I'm getting ahead of myself. First, we will confirm this humiliation play. Second, we're going to go ahead and make sure that our budget is adjusted so that our military wages are up at the middle over here. If the armed forces weren't already loyal, yes, I would take their budget a little bit higher to get that patriotic fervor, but we're there already. Unfortunately, they're not powerful anymore, so we don't have uh, these numbers doubled at the 30% we were enjoying previously. But look, that 15% will make enough of a difference. And beyond that, like I've said previously, it's really going to be our tactics and strategy here that's going to win us the day. But yes, military wages have been brought up so that we're not seeing the reduced training rate, and this will then further allow us to actually get conscripts activated over here in uh, Mysore. We have 23 battalions available here that should be enough, and beyond that as well, there are a few moves we have to consider with regards to our flotillas. As promised, I have duties for uh, both of our sets of flotillas assigned. If we take a quick gander at the uh, English Channel over here, we'll see that the British shipping lanes are getting their obsession, which is tea, from Joseon if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Probably butchering that. My apologies. Nonetheless, that is where they're getting their tea from. It's also where they're getting their silk from. Not as important. And of course, they're getting quite a few other goods uh, from this uh, 
you know, trade route as well, or from these sea routes, I should say, specifically, which is all well and good. However, if we try to uh, raid convoys right here in the English Channel, you can bet that the British are going to send their convoys to try and harass us and destroy our own flotillas, and that'll just not be a good time. So instead of sending our flotilla here, we're going to go ahead and focus our attention up over, I believe, here, or it might be this one. Let's just check really quickly. First, we've got this one selected. And yep, it looks like both the silk and tea routes are coming from uh, this spot. So what does that mean? That means over here in uh, North India HQ, we're going to get uh, Banda Nalwa over here raiding convoys at this location to uh, hit the uh, supply network of Great Britain. And while it won't hit all of these goods that are included in this entire shipping lane, it will hit these two. And perhaps most importantly, this one over here, because with the lack of tea, the British will become extremely radicalized. And I'm not just talking about the game here. They will be extremely radicalized and uh, that should help push their war support lower and lower just that much faster. Now, we'll see how much patience I have to bring this number down to a 0%. I probably don't have that kind of patience, but I just want to see how we can apply some extra pressure. And uh, while we're not going to start raiding convoys right now, obviously giving that order right now means that uh, our buddy is making his way over over the course of the next 30 days. So he'll be in position when the uh, war actually kicks off. Separately, of course, down south over here, we are getting our uh, conscripts going. Dalip Singh is going to be mobilized in a short matter of time. The same applies to uh, Ranjit Kunwar up over here and uh, Jassa Singh Dogra as well. They have some work to do in this war. It's going to be absolutely glorious and uh, it'll all make sense in just a short amount of time as uh, this diplomatic play is slowly making progress towards uh, the second phase. Again, Great Britain is worried, but I really hope they don't back down and I don't think they will because this is a rather important war goal as far as they're concerned they're not going to want to lose their prestige though uh, when I add my uh, second third and potentially fourth war goal I don't think they're going to be too happy about uh, uh, about losing all of that and they might just opt to be humiliated instead now the reason why I'm waiting to add those war goals is because our infamy if we take a look over here is still over 100 and truth be told when we kick this war off it'll either still be at uh, over 100 or it'll bounce right back above that uh, 100 threshold because we're going to be asking for a lot I just don't want uh, to see France get super upset at us right at the beginning over here because I'm sure as I add those war goals, they're going to get more and more upset at us and I just want to reduce the amount of time they've been upset at us to reduce the chance of them joining this diplomatic play against us. If we take a look at the list of countries that could get involved, it is a short but scary list. France, Austria, Scandinavia. We've beaten many of these guys in the past, but you know very well how much I'm terrified of the French and their potential involvement. But more importantly, perhaps I'm terrified of sheer numbers. If they bring enough troops over, it'll be a little more difficult to get the victory that I so desperately want. Oh, what do we have here? It seems as though the Spanish have joined the war specifically to acquire war reparations from the East India Company. Well, that's a very interesting move. Why not try and get war reparations from us if you're going to join the fight anyway? Nonetheless, okay, a little worrying. Great Britain has now become uncertain, though, which is uh, just a positive sign for us. It means they're more likely to actually stick through with this and uh, actually fight. As, uh, oh my goodness, the Dutch have joined the British as well. Okay, this is starting to get a bit more concerning. Nonetheless, I'm not going to get distracted by these two. I am going to stay focused on uh, Great Britain. They are our primary target and we have a lot of damage we want to do to them, right? On the positive side, these guys joining Great Britain slows down the escalation, which gives us just a little bit more time to improve our relations with the French and perhaps avoid their involvement because of those improved relations, right? It also allows us to maybe see a further reduction of our infamy, which might actually get below 100 when we uh, declare our, uh, our, our full intention. So that's exciting. Didn't think we'd see that happen, but uh, hey, it's fine. It's fine. I'm not too worried about these two. What I'm more worried about is actually our radicalization. It's about to hit 10 million again. That's a real bummer. 
I mean, look, the increase seems to have slowed down, which is nice at least, but uh, it's still largely because of the unfulfilled political movement demands, and that's just going to stick around, isn't it? I mean, hopefully we get migration controls through and these guys just kind of give up, but for the time being, we'll, we'll have to deal, and that number is going to bump up even higher when this war comes to an end, and I think you know exactly why that's going to happen, right? Why don't we go ahead and make my intentions even more clear as we're getting very close to the countdown to war. We're going to go ahead and add a handful of war goals here, folks. First of all, I very much intend to conquer a handful of states, and these are going to be absolutely essential states as far as the British economy is concerned and as far as the British prestige is concerned. If we take a look at West Country over here, you'll see a huge variety of industries that can all come in handy for us. And you can also see some barracks over here and some naval bases over here. Again, army power projection, naval power projection, and just goods production, right? Separately, if we take a look at... The home counties themselves you'll see over here big ben which is a big contributor to their prestige you'll also see if we scroll down a little bit additional naval power projection and of course army power projection and beyond that as well yes a variety of goods that they are i think the lead producers of and separate to that as well if we take a look at the midlands here you're going to see even more essential uh, products that give them a lot of prestige alongside you guessed it Army power projection and Navy power projection. What's more, in the Midlands, we see the solution to our coal situation. That's right, folks. This has been my plan for quite some time now. I wish to get the coal mines in the Midlands to uh, supply the great empire of Punjab with coal. How do I intend to do that? Well, it's simple, folks. Our war goals are going to include the conquest of the home counties, the West Country, and, of course, the Midlands. Now, that is going to do a number to our infamy right back up beyond 200 but you know what push has come to shove how long are we expected to wait how long are we expected to simply live with how the great powers of europe decide to judge us no we make our own path we decide who is a pariah we are one of the great powers of the world and uh, we'll take what is rightfully ours apart from all this we're also going to go ahead and use the remaining maneuvers over here to push for the liberation of at least one of their subjects and that subject is cape colony unfortunately that takes a full 20 maneuvers so there isn't too much else we can do if we decide to do that now if i do chase after say liberating countries we're well out of luck there actually unfortunately so gonna have to leave that behind uh and uh, we could of course also pursue war reparations but let's be real here after we're done with great britain they're not going to be able to send us much money in terms of war reparations right 10 percent of the money they make from what the little island that we're going to leave them with not a chance no no value there whatsoever instead we're going to add salt to the wound by yes forcing them to liberate the subject of cape colony that's gonna be some beautiful stuff over here folks and i have some grand plans on exactly how we're going to execute that. Now, it's going to be 20 days before this escalation pause is behind us. Hopefully, during that 20 days, we're not going to see the French join Great Britain. If we investigate France, we'll see that they are currently involved in uh, one diplomatic play elsewhere, potentially. They haven't actually joined in, uh, and hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll stay that way for both of their diplomatic plays, right? All right, we can see, meanwhile, about half of our conscription centers in Mysore have been activated. My intent is to only activate those from Mysore and I do believe if I'm able to pull my moves off correctly here, we won't need any more. And at the same time, looks as though France over here has stopped damaging our mutual relations. Maybe they like what I'm doing here. Maybe they're big fans of uh, this aggression against Great Britain. I mean, they should be, right? I know I am, and I'm sure all the other rivals and nemeses of Great Britain are pleased as well, as I'm just taking a quick gander at our budget here to just see where the situation is with our investment pool. Things are looking okay. A large amount of construction money is coming from the government because we are still building multiple power plants and I do believe we could maybe chase after some government admin buildings though perhaps we'll wait until after this war uh, just so that we're uh, saving some of our investment here for our military activities right because these numbers are going to go higher and higher as these conscription centers continue to get active and as more ammunition and artillery and opium and all that good stuff gets used up the uh, power plants though are about to get completed and hopefully we'll see the uh, gold stacks over here disappear and hopefully we'll see the continued improvement of the uh, standard of living across all strata of society i mean these are all i think positive 
uh, moves. I think I see an upward incline there. Same thing goes with the middle strata. Now it bounces back down a little bit over here. And what about the uh, lower strata over here? Seems somewhat flat, but I do believe this was at like 12.3 or 0.4 not too long ago. So all promising stuff over here, folks, as uh, the diplomatic play continues to escalate without any word from the French. So this is all well and good. Again, still just a little concerned about Spanish and Dutch involvement, though uh, I don't think they're going to be able to pull too much off against us. They are going to be bystanders in this epic war that's going to see some serious damage done to Great Britain. I am so pumped for this as we're just about to enter the uh, countdown to war over here, folks. Uh, again, just holding my breath a little bit and really hoping that France doesn't get involved. As at the bottom right corner over here, we can see ironclads are still quite affordable despite these recent movements. And we can also see the price of steel having been dropped. So our recent progress has made a good difference here. Uh, but hardwood over here continues to be prohibitively expensive. I just wonder what we can do with regards to hardwood if we can find uh, some other opportunities to perhaps import it or if we just need to focus on, uh, yeah, building more uh, higher level logging camps. I mean, I guess we could pursue these guys over in North Bengal, though, again, just trying to change the makeup of uh, of interest groups there, right? <sighs> am I really going to say no to that extra throughput? I, I think I am. Let's go ahead and hit up uh, Mysore instead. Let's get these guys up to level 10 as well and just see what that does for us as our economy is looking pretty good as most of the construction or I guess all of the construction now is being covered by the investment pool for just one more week. So it's going to look uh, pretty bad in a short matter of time. It's okay, though. Like I said, we're not taxing anybody, so I'm not really concerned about uh, the situation there as the countdown to war has begun, folks. This is going to be absolutely wild. France did not get involved, so it's all us all day, and uh, I cannot wait to show you the plans I have developed because it is really our, uh, our strategy here that's going to win us the day. I mean, I say it with so much confidence and cockiness, but rest assured, deep down within that confidence is a nugget of anxiety because things could go horrible horribly wrong, horribly, horribly wrong, and I'm trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Great Britain here, and I'm feeling great pride as we see in just a short amount of time, war with Great Britain has broken out. This is going to be absolutely huge, folks, to arms to make a glorious day for the new Maharaja, to make a great move in the name of all those who have resided under their boot for far too long, not just in the Indian subcontinent, but in the world over. Folks, our first move is actually going to be to get our soldiers down over here led by Dalip Singh to mobilize and uh, just sit back and relax. And you might be thinking, well, hang on a second, that's a little anticlimactic, but no, 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 fear not, folks, because over here, we do have our wonderful Admiral Bandanalva doing some work against these shipping lanes that are providing the British, don't forget, with their obsession. Tea. Yes, silk too, but T is the primary target here. And so we're mobilizing, we're letting all of our troops, you know, get ready for war. We're making sure that we've saved as much money as possible. We've minimized our expenses for as long as possible. And, and slowly but surely, yes, we're going to mobilize Ranjit Kunwar over here as well. And of course, Jassa Singh Dogra as well. All these guys are going to see a lot of action, but we're going to take it easy. We know we have this in the bag, so we're not stressing. We're not fretting. We're going to take our time. We're going to hurt the uh, desire for war over here. As you can see, 24.8% of the British population is already radical. And so we're seeing a negative 0.49 to war support over here. I'm looking forward to seeing that number grow even slightly before we pull off our big moves. And if we compare their uh, negative 0.74 war support loss per week to our negative 0.38 war support loss per week, I'm feeling very comfortable with just this slow trickle for the time being as well. And it's actually quite nice to see that only 6.5% of our population is actually radical. So as big as this number feels from a pure percentage perspective, again, because our nation is so massive and so populous, the actual percentage here is nothing and the damage being done there is basically nothing as well. While uh, it seems as though citizens of the world over here is uh, getting involved with regards to migration control. What do we have here? Inspired by the ongoing reform to migration controls, now Bahadur of the Intelligentsia has penned a vision for a future where borders are abolished altogether. Borders are the scars of a map. Like scars, there are some who find them beautiful, in a way. Hard fought, hard earned. They find them so beautiful, they forget that maps don't need scars, and so they start inflicting them. On maps, but more horrifyingly, on people. The day we can let go of the past and let the scars heal is the day when we can finally be free. Is this the future we want? Or uh, 
Does it have just the right spirit? Though it is naively utopian, that improves the enactment success chance ever so slightly. But if this is the future we want, it'll greatly increase the enactment success chance. It'll greatly improve Nao Bahadur's popularity, and it'll help the intelligentsia quite a bit, though it will upset the armed forces. Now, the armed forces are exceedingly loyal right now, right? We have a seven uh, gap to losing their loyalty, so we could uh, we could stand to upset them a little bit. And again, just as a reminder, we could always improve their budget even further to keep them pleased. So with that in mind, you know what? Yeah, I quite like the idea of a borderless future. And I'm thinking, again, from a roleplay perspective, I'm thinking about the Indian subcontinent. All of these cuts, all of these, yes, so-called scars, what if they were all removed? What if this entire subcontinent was not this hodgepodge of princely states and subjects and puppets, but instead was one glorious unified nation? Could we have such a future? Only time will tell, but we can certainly, for the time being, dream. That plus 20% enactment success chance will be quite helpful for us, I think. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to getting these uh, migration controls in place and hopefully seeing the uh, closed borders uh, political movement over here go away. And uh, looking at this top right corner over here, though, actually points out to me the uh, coldness of the French towards us. Again, declaring all those uh, war goals has made them quite upset. There's not much we can do about that, but at least they didn't join that diplomatic play against us. The only thing we have to worry about is uh, future diplomatic plays. Will they try to cut us down to size, or will this war last long enough such that they are actually uh, disinterested by the time the war is done? Who knows? We'll see, I suppose, all in due time. As uh, right now, if we take a look at the investment pool, we can see it is growing at a decent rate. So why don't we go ahead and uh, pursue some further upgrades in North Bengal. Maybe we should get the uh, steel mills over here upgraded ever so slightly, get them up to level 10, and hopefully we're still seeing a bit more wiggle room. Let's Let's get the munitions plants growing as well and uh, let's go ahead and push them a bit further too all right cool it'll stay as a positive change i, I want to try and keep the investment pool growing as we continue to develop uh, and see if we can't find that sweet spot where the investment pool does take care of everything while we try to recover from our debt finally as well in the midst of this war that is of course without adding a burden to all of our uh, people with consumption taxes and higher tax rates right we're trying to avoid that for as long as we can would you look at that it seems as though the british are trying to make landfall over here they are going to suffer a horrendous defeat at the hands of our defending garrisons, though. Struan Grieg over here trying to make some moves with his 16 battalions, but the 30 battalions of the North India HQ are doing wonderful work over here, just absolutely obliterating these uh, would-be conquerors, right? So why don't we go ahead and uh, play a bit of like for like. They're trying to make some moves up over there and some moves down over here as well. This is the Dutch trying to make some moves, actually, and it seems as though the East India Company is uh, holding their ground and forcing the Dutch back. Beautiful stuff, beautiful stuff. But yes, let's go ahead and make some of our own moves to uh, to make up for this aggression and to, uh, to, again, respond in kind. I'm going to go ahead and actually promote Nahal Dillon one more step over here because that way he'll actually have access to all 56 flotillas. And we're going to go ahead and kick off a naval invasion, not in England or Scotland or Ireland or Wales, but all the way down over here in Cape Colony. This should draw the eye and ire and attention of all the uh, British generals who are probably currently trying to defend the homeland lest we attack them at their heart. And so if we draw them out elsewhere, well, we'll see what happens. Meanwhile, electrical capacitors have been unlocked, which is extremely promising. So development upon development over here. Let's take a look at our textile industries and get these textile mills using the electric sewing machines. It looks as though we are going to have some issues with electricity. So maybe we should hold off on that for the time being. That's a bit of a bummer. And apart from that, the automatic power looms are probably not the right call because again we do want to try and keep laborers employed right so fair enough a bit of a bit of a downer there but uh listen one downer amidst so many uppers is perfectly perfectly fine we just have to remember that the textile mills are yes pending an upgrade to their production methods as soon as we can get the uh, electricity uh, supply increased it does look like the dutch here are yes being pushed back and over here as well we have a definite victory for the garrison of uh, north india hq vacuum canning meanwhile has started to spread 
in eight to 11 months time, we'll have access to an additional uh, food industry production method, though again, that'll require oil, so it might not happen. We'll keep an eye out for it, and uh, who knows, at the end of this war, we might be able to force access to oil somewhere, and uh, we'll see how that plays out. While down over here at the uh, Cape Colony, we're going to see Dalip Singh arrive in about 38 days time. I do believe he is 100% mobilized, so yes, once that countdown is done, he should launch his assault. There was a slight chance of an interception over here by a tiny force, so I'm not too concerned about that, as uh, Banda Nalwa over here doesn't seem to be having any luck with his uh, attacks against these convoys. Bit of a shame, bit of a shame, just have to give him a little bit more time, I suppose. I mean, he is a bit of a pacifist, maybe that's affecting him, it's not actually, that's not actually a game mechanic as far as I know, but uh, hey, hopefully he'll get some hits in there, and we will be able to upset the uh, British a little bit further before we actually attack them. But yes, for the time being, let's keep our eyes on the prize down over here in Cape Colony, as Dalip Singh is just about a month away from making his move here. Oh, but let's not lose focus on some of the action back at home. It seems as though, despite the defeat over here, that is, uh, you know, just around around the corner, another attempt is being made by yet another 16 battalions that are being handily defeated by the 71, again, from North India HQ's garrison. We are doing wonderfully over here. This is very promising, and hopefully this is a sign of their generals actually being distracted elsewhere as well. Now, this is both uh, led by General Struan Grieg over here. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I've never actually seen uh, that last name or that first name in my life, so I'm probably butchering them uh, just like we butchered their attempts at making landfall. Fortress India remains secure as down south over here cape colony is under threat again just about uh what three weeks before we make our assault and at the same time i do want to highlight great britain's prestige because again we're going to make a huge hit to this so i just want to highlight it here and there just so we can keep a track of just how much of damage we're going to cause to it i assure you it's not going to be a slight amount of damage it's going to be absolutely huge it's going to be absolutely magnificent and i cannot wait to uh, show you the before and after but 1756 is where they sit at present now i just want to highlight even before we've made our first offensive the uh, British war support has dropped to plus 88, so things are going very well for us. But I do need to point out as well that their war support cannot drop below zero because we haven't made enough moves against them, right? And that's going to be absolutely essential. They are not going to give up all of these uh, war goals that we've pushed without us bringing their war support right down to negative 100, which is why we do have to, yes, be on the front foot and be aggressive. Because otherwise, I mean, we're, we're sure we're going to reduce their war support to zero, but that's just not going to be enough, right? So let's, uh, yeah, keep an eye on this move over here by uh, Dalip Singh. Sure, again, we might get intercepted at sea, but I'm sure that's not going to be a problem for the 56 flotillas led by Nahal Dillon over here. So in just about three days' time, we should see some action. And there we go. There is a battle at sea. The, yes, 56 flotillas of uh, ironclads over here fighting off the uh, one flotilla of man -o wars as you can see this is not an issue whatsoever these guys are going to get absolutely destroyed uh the only thing they're managing is to delay the inevitable which does hurt us in some ways sure but hey here you go we're uh, trying to make landfall over here now it's just seven battalions versus their five and our offense is actually lower than their defense so we could have lost this battle but things have worked out for us uh, very well actually because it seems as though their battalions weren't actually topped up. I don't think they mobilized soon enough. I don't think they made enough moves soon enough. And so we have the numbers advantage and we're definitely going to secure a beachhead over here. And that is going to be absolutely essential to us as at the bottom right corner, you can finally see Banda Nalva over here sinking some British convoys in the East China Sea. So if we just take a quick peek at what that has done to the uh, supply of, again, tea and silk, we'll see just a slight reduction in the efficiency of these uh, supply networks, right? It's not as much as I would have liked to see at this stage of the war, but hey, it's something, and hopefully we'll see this uh, reduction accelerate a little bit, and uh, we'll actually see additional harm done to these, uh, these lanes, right? At the same time, down over here, it seems like further attempts are being made, but they're also being thwarted. I mean, look at this. These, uh, what, 28 battalions have been absolutely obliterated, and meanwhile, over here, they started with 21. Again, just completely reduced to uh, a pile of corpses. This is working out wonderfully for us, as down over here as well, we're 
going to, I'm sure, see a beautiful, beautiful victory. And now we have to get ready to make some moves as well. We have some mobilized generals back in uh, Persia HQ and Himalayas HQ, and they do have to make some moves, as it does seem as though uh, Bandanalwa is making some moves of his own. Another 76 British convoys have been sunk in the East China Sea. So, sure, maybe we will see some uh, acceleration there as far as the uh, damage we're causing. Very exciting to see. And at the same time, perhaps we should consider the... Uh, investment pool over here it is starting to make a bit of money so why don't we go ahead and head on over to uh north bengal and uh, sure pursue additional what motor industries that sounds good to me let's get these guys up to level 15 and uh, eventually they might start taking some money from the government but you know what why don't we go ahead and yes develop some more power plants let's get some power plants going elsewhere perhaps maybe in delhi we can get uh, some of that love spread out right so let's get the power plant set up over here it'll take about 30 weeks time let's get them to level uh, 10 sure and uh, hopefully it's not a foolish decision to forego that uh throughput increase right but uh, it's fine and, and this is fine too i, I don't mind uh, operating at a deficit we've been doing it for so long we've been managing it just fine i'm, I'm really the furthest thing from concerned about that as uh, we're about to see a beautiful victory over here they're just holding on right at the end there just barely managing to uh, keep this fight alive for longer than they have any right but uh, as soon as we get this uh, beachhead uh, we're gonna make some serious moves and pray that uh, the intended end result is what we get again this is bait right this is bait so let's go ahead and take a look at the fronts we've developed over here and we can see a dutch general is making a move okay alongside travancore and east india company generals oh here we go we've got a general coming in from where ku smith you belong to who cape colony fair enough thomas mcclee you're coming in from uh, new south wales yes you are okay fair enough fair enough malcolm galloway coming in from great britain good stuff. Let's go ahead and make sure that we're not lagging behind. I should have been uh, making some moves of my own. So let's go ahead and get uh, Persia HQ's Ranjit Kunwar coming down over here, trying to uh, defend the front. Again, we just need to hold it. And the same thing applies to our Himalayas HQ's Jassa Singh Dogra. He is an expert offensive planner, and we will be using that. But for the time being, let's just get them here to defend the front, as uh, we're just trying to see how things play out with Dalip Singh advancing the front against no defenders, right? It'll be some time before anybody arrives Ku Smith in five days time but his troops are weakened their morale is extremely low everybody else will take about two months to about a month and a half so we should be seeing some advances over here as we wait for the other generals to arrive as well and again this is just bait I'm really hoping we'll see some advances succeed and we'll see some additional British generals come over here as yes there's a, a further opening I think being made we've pushed a bit further still just the one front over here I would really like to see multiple fronts open up but this is promising this is very promising two British generals coming down over here neither of whom were the ones leading the uh, assault against uh, our glorious subcontinent as there are now concerns being raised about what uh, rural folk and industrialists going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Does this need to be addressed? Do I care for the rural folk or do I care more for the industrialists? The industrialists are the future of this nation. And if I could reduce the political strength of rural folk, I'll be much happier. So they just need to accept that we cannot always please everyone. They need to accept that their time might be behind us. But let's stay focused on the task at hand over here. Things are looking pretty good. And uh, in just a moment's time, we're going to... Uh, get just a little bit more aggressive gonna give it a bit more time for uh, more british generals to perhaps get to their sort of claws into cape colony as we're seeing an actual battle kick off over here well this is interesting it looked like we were gonna you know seed some ground there but uh, but no we outnumber them so tremendously that uh, we're almost guaranteed a victory here despite the uh discrepancy in our uh, offense versus their defense right so this should be a guaranteed win over here as great britain's radicalization has reached 25.3 percent of their population i can't guarantee that's because of their lack of tea but uh, maybe maybe it is and uh, you know what why don't we say it is just so we can reward banda nova with some uh, medals at the end of this war now this battle is pretty much done as well excellent and it's still just the one front over here where in what about a month's time we're going to see all of these reinforcing generals arrive so we're going to give it just that one month during which we'll have another battle kickoff over here this should be an easy victory easier than the last one despite their uh, larger battalion count and uh, we also see struan grieg trying to make a move towards cape colony as well this is working out exactly as desired, exactly as planned, though it is a bit of a bummer that some of our convoys are being sunk now. So this might be a bit of an issue. We'll see exactly how this plays out. Yes, I could have had our uh, Nahal Dillon over here 
doing some uh, some some patrolling, but hey, it's too late for that. Lost a couple of convoys. It's not the end of the world, as we do see that France has declared a rivalry with us. This I do not like. This could actually go very poorly. Um, I was not expecting that. Nonetheless, here's yet another glorious victory about to be won in Cape Colony. They're trying to fight back, but nope, there's our victory. And with that, we're actually going to see multiple fronts open up here. So why don't we go ahead and send uh, Ranjit Kunwar uh, defending, let's say, this front up over here. And we're going to actually get Dalip Singh moving elsewhere. He's not going to be able to move there without the help of the massive flotilla from South India HQ, though. Nahal Dillon is going to lead yet another naval invasion. And this time, folks, we are, in fact, targeting the British Isles themselves. It's going to be West Country that we're going to strike with our 56 flotillas. Potential invasion fleet interception here by uh, Roderick Rolo with uh, 55 flotillas of his own, but uh, hopefully he'll simply roll over as uh, we come on through with Dalip Singh aboard these ships. It's going to be absolutely massive. In just about two months' time, we're hopefully going to see just open season across this island and take as much of that territory as possible to further reduce British war support as a result of occupation. Their uh, exhaustion is currently hitting them at negative 1.18 per week, which is you know, quite nice to begin with. But again, we've managed to bait quite a few of their generals down south over here. If we just take a look, we have two over here at this front. We have uh, yet another one, I think, moving to this front over here. And that means they're no longer pushing at uh, our uh, borders over here. They're not trying to make landfall anymore while we are, yes, pushing in towards the British Isles. Bandanawa continues to sink more British convoys in the East China Sea. And again, that's going to continue to apply pressure on their uh, supply chain here and their supply routes, just uh, hurting their, again, supply of things like tea and yes, silk too, and perhaps further their radicalization, right? All good stuff as far as we're concerned. All this other stuff is probably suffering because of just a general loss of convoys, maybe. Not sure what's going on with all these 95%, but the significantly lower 84% now, or now back up to 89%, is I think as a result of our convoy rating, as you can see there. And uh, it looks as though some of the convoys are now being redistributed, as uh, we're also striking at the man of wars that uh, Great Britain has been importing from Joseon. So that's all well and good, as Dalip Singh over here is just a fortnight away from landing in uh, West Country, though there will of course be a uh, interception at sea, which I'm fairly confident we're going to overcome easily. Machine guns, right? The automatic machine guns, which will take just two years to get now, because again, as you research more in previous tiers, it becomes faster and faster to research uh, technologies further down the uh, the tier list, right? So let's get the automatic machine guns researched in, yes, 24 months time. And let's take a quick peek at our literacy over here and our uh, innovation cap. Yeah, looks like we're still good. And uh, my oh my, literacy at 54.5%. That's really nice to see, uh, as is this, yes, absolutely brutal defeat of the British Navy. Punjab rules the waves, baby. This is looking absolutely fantastic. And uh, shortly thereafter, yes, we're gonna make landfall. And if our plan has played out as intended, we're actually going to see this entire island or most of this island be taken before British generals are able to respond because they've been baited to Cape Colony where they're being kept busy by our other generals and the generals of our uh, puppets as well. The East India Company and co are doing a lot of work down there as over here you can see we have actually secured these little islands and formed England HQ and we continue to push north over here as Great Britain is scrambling back. It'll take them 62 days to get here to try and defend this front. They are not not going to make it before we make a decent bit of progress. But folks, we cannot rest on our laurels. Let's go ahead and get uh, Jassa Singh Dogra perhaps moving up over here to advance the front as well. And Ranjit Kunvar as well. Let's bring you up over here to advance this front. They were not presently involved in any battle, so they're able to move right away. And it'll take them about 60 or so days as well. But what I'm hoping for is as we make some moves over here without any opposition, we'll open up additional fronts and these guys can kind of spread out and uh, push in multiple directions as, oh my goodness, you can see this panic over here as all of these generals are rushing back. They have been had and we are gaining territory extremely quickly over here. We are now on uh, this island proper and we're going to continue pushing, we're going to continue advancing, and we're going to continue sinking British convoys as well. This is absolutely wondrous. Their war support is currently at 53.7 and if we take a look, you'll see their uh, occupation percentage is going to grow at an astronomical rate because again, 
again, that is reliant on the uh, island itself, right? Their puppets and stuff don't count, so they're already 20% occupied. This is huge, and yes, another front has been opened. We are seeing Justice Singh Dogra and Ranjit Kunwar heading in this direction. They're going to actually arrive before the other generals do, but they're not looking to advance the front, so I'm sure they'll be fine. Let's go ahead and get, uh, sure, we'll keep Dalip Singh sort of moving on his own autonomously, choosing which fronts to push, and hopefully he'll push in the right directions. As uh, you'll notice as well, having secured the home counties, we will now be able to get Great Britain's war support below zero. So folks, if we're able to defend and hold on to their uh, home counties here, victory is pretty much guaranteed. Now, it is going to be difficult. However, because we do have trenches and we now have uh, quite a few trench rat generals as well, we should be able to hold on as, oh my goodness, Dalip Singh has actually pushed on over to this front instead after having completely shut down the West Country and completely occupied it. We're now going to see more progress uh, pushing northwards as there's yet another month before all of these generals are able to arrive and respond to this aggression. This is working out perfectly. This is working out beautifully. My goodness, I could not have asked for a better execution over here as their war support continues to dwindle now at a rate of 7.1 per week. They are 42.9% occupied. I cannot express my glee enough here, folks. Again, smiling ear to ear and beyond. I think victory is guaranteed here. More fronts are opening up. We have our generals spreading out a little bit. Uh, what do we have over here? So it looks like Dalip Singh is pushing this one. Why don't we go ahead and get uh, Jessa Singh Dogra advancing this one instead. And uh, that might hopefully influence uh, Dalip Singh uh, going up north afterwards. And it looks as though, nah, he decided to go down south over here. That's fine, actually, because that is uh, part of the home county. So occupying more of that just gives us more of a runway, I suppose. While up over here at this front, we are going to see another week before responding generals arrive, perhaps? Oh, no, here they are. Okay, fair enough. So the response force has arrived at the home county's Lancashire front. And uh, what are we going to do over here? Ranjit Kumar will be here in about eight days' time. It looks as though they're trying to advance the front. What I can probably do is get... Uh, not just a Singh Dogra who's advancing this front now, but perhaps Dalip Singh to defend this front up over here to try and hold the line while uh, Ranjit Kunwar instead will advance this one into Wales to try and again secure more territory over here. I think that's the better spread. It'll take a few days for Dalip Singh to get up over here and push into the uh, defensive formation, but he'll be there in time before their advance actually pulls off and that should hopefully allow us to hold the line here. He has... Uh, not yet arrived. Has he arrived? Yeah, he has arrived. Okay, cool. That was throwing me off a little bit. Hopefully that'll be enough. It looks like it should be enough as some of our uh, other puppets are, are here to advance as well. Just a Singh Dogra. No, you're not supposed to be here. You're supposed to be... Oh, right. Okay, hold on. Hang on a second. Ranjit Kunwar is down over here. So just a Singh Dogra, let's go ahead and pull you down over here to finish the task off over here. While up over here, I think we're fine to defend with just Dalip Singh as 47 British battalions go toe-to-toe -to -toe with 59 Punjabi battalions. And what do we have here? It looks like a massive defense here. Again, trench rat coming into play. And if we take a look at all of our troops, their defensive stats are absolutely massive. We've got the hand cranked machine gun. We've got trench rat. We've got field works. We've got, of course, the patriotic fervor, our siege artillery. Everything is working out beautifully. And of course, there's the trench infantry as well. Meanwhile, the enemy offense is looking pitiful by comparison, further damaged by poor visibility. This is beautiful stuff. We might actually be able to hold the line up over there. This is absolutely magnificent. Look at these lines as well, folks. My goodness, my goodness, my absolute goodness. Down over here, we're going to finish the advance, I think, before these 15 battalions are able to respond. Ah, just a bit more work needs to be done. They are now defending the front, so why don't we go ahead and flip the script and start defending there as well as up over here. I think we'll be able to pull this off before the their generals are able to respond. Indeed, we are. And let's go ahead and make sure that all of our generals are moving appropriately, defending the front there and up over here as well. Nope, we're going to defend the front, hold the line as British war support is deep in the negatives, and it's only a matter of time at a rate of negative 9.87 per week. It is only a matter of time before they completely give up on this war. And as they are losing hope, as they are seeing their nation crumble to Punjab, we're going to turn our attention briefly to the subcontinent once more to, uh, yeah, continue making improvements here because you know what? Our economy is looking fantastic. Our investment pool is flush with cash. Things are great down here, including these backroom dealings that are being exposed. It's fine. I'm not upset. Such is the nature of politics. No, no, it's not. That's really going to hurt our, uh, our uh, success chance. 
isn't it? My goodness. We could instead throw them to the wolves and uh, clean up their mess. It'll hurt our bureaucracy ever so slightly, and it'll still hurt our enacting success chance. But you know what? Yeah, it's okay. We'll clean up this mess. It's not a big deal. Everything's going perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and invest in some uh, government admin buildings, perhaps in Mysore. Let's go ahead and build these guys up to level 15. Sure, invest some government funds there. And at the same time, let's go ahead and take a look at our market just to see if we are still concerned about, yes, we are clothes, furniture, all that good stuff, all the usual uh, suspects, right? Sure, fair enough. Why don't we go ahead and uh, improve the textile mills, then expand them over in what? Uh, North Bengal, sure. Let's go ahead and stack these guys up a little bit, build them up to level five, let's say, but let's not forget the need for uh, further infrastructure investments over here. So let's build up the uh, railway as well, let's say up to level 20. And uh, that should work out just fine. I'm sure we're going to burn through, no, we're not. They have 6.21 million uh, set aside in the investment pool. We'll be just fine. In fact, I could probably build even more stuff. My goodness. Let's go ahead and chase after improved food industries, perhaps over here in Delhi. Sure. Let's get these guys up to uh, level 30. Let's get the one in Punjab. No, no, no. Let's instead establish one in North Bengal. Again, just trying to get these guys employed in as many other ways as possible. So we're weakening the uh, rural folk as much as possible. And if we actually investigate that, what do we have over here? Political strength of 46.3 million. What is going on? How have they increased in number? They went from 9.9 .9 million to 10.5 million. Am I, what am I, what am I, what if I, what is going, oh my goodness. <laughs> hey, at least their clout has dropped, right? That's nice, though I think that's because we ignored their urbanization concerns. Listen, it is what it is. We'll uh, try and keep working on that as we uh, continue to see the demise of uh, Great Britain unfold before our eyes here. This is absolutely wonderful stuff. I mean, look at this. Look at this. This is absolutely glorious. Wow. Just completely crushed them. And down over here, are we still uh, holding the line? Ooh, 18 of their battalions against 10 of ours. So they might have the upper hand here, despite our significantly higher defense rating. It seems as though, uh, I suppose, they outnumber us. And so they're actually going to have a field day here. And it looks as though there are some undefended fronts. Oh, I don't think I'm too worried about these guys. Uh, that's not going to cause any issues for me. The Indian subcontinent itself is secure. And while they are making some moves in Cape Colony, again, this was just bait. This was just a distraction. And they fell for it. My goodness, did they fall for it. So we don't really care about the devastation or work over here. Again, these guys will ultimately be given their freedom, and uh, we've done everything we can and, and everything we need to down over here as uh, Spain has decided to give up on this war and as more British convoys are being sunk. Beautiful stuff. I mean, I suppose we could stop that because uh, maybe we want to avoid the radicalization of these uh, various states that we're about to take control of but if we just investigate the damage we've done over here you can see brought down to 76 percent uh which is just great to see i mean the convoy rating has worked out quite nicely and i'm sure that's actually radicalizing more and more of their people as we see it up at 25.7 percent now but uh, more importantly perhaps negative 53.1 is their war support it continues to drop at close to negative 10 per week so uh what only five weeks four weeks now left before victory is uh, had that's fantastic up over here another advance coming in from uh, the British soldiers and we're going to see what 20 of their battalions against 16 of ours do we have the upper hand here it seems as though this battle is tipping in our favor oh that flipped back and forth real hard my goodness what do the detail screens look like over here Okay, interesting, interesting. It seems as though we're going to uh, get them to dwindle at a faster rate than we're dwindling, so that's promising, but it is uh, shifting back and forth quite a bit as uh, Bandanawa continues to sink additional convoys. Again, I could have been a bit more patient, but folks, how could I be when victory was staring at us uh, from the aisles? How could I just, you know, wait as this golden opportunity presented itself to bait and switch and take Great Britain by surprise, forcing their capitulation forcing the independence of South Africa and forcing the loss of a great deal of territory to Punjab. Folks, this is absolutely glorious. We've made such a big move. We've absolutely devastated Great Britain in so many ways. They've lost South Africa or Cape Colony as they called it. They've lost Canada as of the previous session and now they've lost London as well as West Country and Midlands and all of their coal mines. I believe that might be all of them actually. And we've acquired them and folks, on top of all that, we have humiliated Great Britain in more ways than one. This is beautiful stuff. If we take a look at their prestige, it is down to 851. And that's not all folks. It's going to drop a lot more. Their GDP is not at 101 million. This does not factor in the huge loss they've just taken. So if we just spend a moment here to just observe, 
just watch as uh, these numbers shift because look, I've got a lot of construction queued up here. Oh, look, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna queue up some additional construction in the West Country and in the home counties and maybe in the Midlands as well, just to counteract this reduced access to the Punjabi market. I wanna make sure that the radicalization we're seeing in these states is reduced as quickly as possible because again, that is a huge bump, right? And as I queue all that up, we're gonna go ahead and actually uh, just watch the dwindling prestige of Great Britain. So why don't we go ahead and uh, build up these ports over here, because again, ports also help with uh, uh, infrastructure, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Up over here in the Midlands, I do believe they have access to ports too. Yes, they do. And uh, I believe over here in the home counties, we are able to build up the ports to level 10. Let's prioritize that actually. And beyond that, by the way, I just want to point out that we do in fact, yes, now have Big Ben and the 50 prestige it gives us. So that's beautiful as well. Big Ben is now in Punjab, folks. Uh, but yes, let's uh, keep our eyes on the uh, glorious drop of prestige. And separately, you'll have to watch the GDP drop as well as we uh, just uh, kind of sit back and relax and enjoy the fruits of our labor. Again, if we bring their prestige below 702 for an extended duration, they will actually lose their uh, great power status and just become a major power. And as you can see, their current prestige is dropping extremely quickly. Their GDP is also dropping extremely quickly. And uh, folks, it's only just begun. They're currently position number seven in the world. And I think it's going to drop quite low. That uh, humiliation play has already made a big difference. And just the sheer quantity of stuff we've taken away from them is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, if we take a look at their current prestige, you'll see that from their uh, leading goods production, they're only now acquiring, what is this, like four products worth of, uh, of prestige. And even then it's all level twos and threes. And as uh, Civilizing Mission gets unlocked for us, rather ironically, we can see, yeah, that number just continues to drop. And uh, don't stop looking at their uh, GDP either. It is currently at 77 million dropping as I speak, while at the bottom right corner, you can see socialism has started spreading in our nation. And again, that's something we could very much take advantage of uh, down the line with regards to some of the other laws we might want to pass and all that good stuff. Meanwhile, the industrialists are happy as well. Job creators are being activated once more, again, funding our investment pool even further. And uh, my goodness, look at this. Their prestige continues to drop. They're in the low 500s now. Their GDP is at about 64 million. And uh, come on now, come on, you can go lower. How low can you go, baby? There we go. Cross that threshold into the high 400s now. Absolutely wild. How are they still number seven in the world? Oh, it's just because they were a previously a great power. Once they lose that, I'm sure they'll drop significantly. I mean, that's that's actually kind of crazy. How, how, are they still number seven? Sure. Okay, fine. Hold on to that as their GDP has almost been halved. They're at 56 million here, folks. My goodness. And uh, current prestige at 430 now. I feel like I'm an auctioneer right now. Just uh, talking about numbers over here. We have uh, 429, 429. Can I get a 428? I got a 428. Can I get a 420? Oh, 420. We got a 420. We got a 420. 420. There we go. 420 down to 418 already. Any lower than 418? Do I have a 410? Do I have a 410? Do I have 415? 413. 413. This is... I'm having the time of my life here. My goodness, folks, we have done a lot of work. And as we're watching this, I ask you, what would you like to see after this series is done? I mean, don't get it twisted. There's still some work to do here. We do still have to wait until their uh, status is actually reduced from great power to major power, and only then can we move to subjugate them, right? So there is still some work to be done here. This playthrough is not yet done, but... Uh, when it does finish over the next, you know, two, maybe three sessions, what do you want to see next? Because, uh, well, I'd, I'd like to know, um, you know, do we want to see Haiti? Do we want to see Indonesia? Do we want to see South America, Central America? I've seen a lot of requests come up, but uh, I'm just uh, curious to start collecting them a bit more now and, uh, and to, to start making some decisions with regards to what comes next on the channel as far as Victoria 3 is concerned. So leave me your thoughts in the comments down below as uh, we celebrate, yes, the drop of uh, all this uh, power that Great Britain once had and the drop of their GDP as well. Look at that. It is lower than they were at game start now. My goodness. And separately, I should also take a look at this inefficient agriculture situation over here. Should we follow their advice or should we have uh, the industrialists become a bit more upset at us? No, we should follow their advice to try and improve the industrialist opinion or rather keep it where it is. We should also consider this dangerous equipment situation over here where we uh, do, yes, pull the brakes on the engines of progress because I do not want to upset trade unions. Let's go ahead and slow down production while the staff adjusts to this new machinery. It will upset the landowners uh, and the industrialists too. I want the industrialists to stay loyal. That's a bit of a bummer. Do I want to uh, have the trade unions suffer as a result? 
they'll stop being happy with us if we do that. You know what? I've done fine so far without job creators being uh, available, so slow down production for the time being, and uh, hopefully that doesn't come to, uh, to bite us in the butt. At the same time, by the way, we are being bitten in the butt a little bit by this uh, attempt at doing what? Punjab versus Great Britain. Oh, these guys are still in the fight. My goodness. No, 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 no. Why are you doing this? Let's uh, let's end this fighting. Do I really want to propose this again? Do I need to? I don't think I need to. They've already been humiliated. Uh, but yes, propose this peace deal. Make it a white peace with uh, the United States of America with their funky flag and the fighting there. It'll be a white peace and that'll save us a lot of money. I didn't notice that this war was still ongoing. I thought it was all done all over, but uh, that's okay. I was just a little distracted by all this uh, beautiful damage we've done to uh, Great Britain. 382 is their current prestige. And uh, I think it's going to sink even lower, folks. I think it's going to continue going lower and lower. But uh, maybe we should stop being distracted by this as they hit 380. I think this session has gone on for long enough. I do hope you enjoyed it, folks. And I do hope you're excited for what comes next as we continue to develop our nation and as we continue to push into uh, Great Britain to puppet them. I mean, again, we can't do it now. We have to, of course, wait until our truce comes to an end, which will be on the 8th of May, 1909. And yes, we also have to wait until their prestige actually kicks them down into, uh, well... <laughs> nothing status potentially my goodness and and then we can subjugate them and celebrate a glorious glorious victory my goodness folks again i hope you had a good time i most certainly did uh this is what we're calling it a session and of course no session is truly done without me saying a massive thanks to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis y'all keep us alive and running smoothly and of course a big old thanks to each and every one of you for watching until next time cheers